All right. Testing it out. Let's see how this looks. I have no idea how it's going to look. Is it working? Okay, first thing I need to test. Audio. Does audio sound good? I do not know. Let's test out. Is there audio? Testing out the audio. Cool. All right. Hello, six people that are here. Uh, I'm starting a little, I'm not going to start early. I'm just going to like test out all my cameras and whatnot. Cool. All right. Sounds like the audio is good. Hopefully it's loud enough last time, or this time. I got a comment that last time audio was a little quiet. Uh, so I've tried turning that up in the software to see if that helps. I need to cut something real quick. I have had a crazy day, crazy week, honestly crazy past month or so. I don't have tape with me right now and I need it to take off the skeleton head and I'll show you guys why in a little bit. Uh, so I have these like used sticker sheets that I'm having to cut little like pieces of sticker from. <laughs> ah, everything is so crazy right now. It's, it's all right, we're here, we're here, we're doing the stream, it's gonna happen, it's a good time. All right, let me cut myself some sticker. Hopefully this works. Otherwise, I don't know. Uh, let's see. So we're gonna start officially at three, hopefully, maybe a little later, just give some uh, people time to come in. Uh, oh, I forgot. Probably not gonna be a whole lot of people here today. That's all right. I know I didn't really like do a lot of announcements uh, because this was a little bit unplanned, perhaps. I um, I've been really busy with school, and I knew that I really wanted to get this done this season. Of course, giving people plenty of time to get their skeletons all together. So I wanted to do it sooner rather than later, even if that meant I wasn't quite fully <laughs> sure how it was gonna work. Because um, I'm not gonna be able to do it any stream for the next couple of weeks because I'm going to be out of town. I'm going to Castle Park in California, um, that little like theme park that I did the skeleton show for. Uh, I'm going to go see my skeletons. I'm so excited. Congratulations on getting into the school. Thank you so much. I am like, that was insane. <laughs> I'm so happy to be there. Um, it's been really fun. I've been having a good time in school. We've been like learning a lot of really interesting things. Um, and what I have been learning has been like already, I think, very valuable. Um, so I can't wait. It's been, it's been a lot of work, but it's going well. Alrighty. Just waiting, waiting for people to come in. Getting ready. I hope everything's good. Like I said, I, so I got up at seven this morning. I've been like getting ready <laughs> for this because I haven't had time this week to like do a lot of preparations. Um, and I know, like I said in the announcement, this isn't what I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be where I could go through like the full process and we could kind of like, like a build along where I can go through, through from like scratch. Uh, and that's not going to happen today. Um, cause I just don't have like the resources to, or the time to do that here. Uh, so instead I have with me, of course, one of the skeletons that is already, I already made him into an animatronic. Uh, but I've kind of disassembled him a little bit, uh, so we can just kind of like reassemble him and I can just show you here's what you'll do. It'll kind of be like a verbal walkthrough uh, of all the different steps of like, and I'll also some like tips on like, here's a good way of doing this, you know, uh, on how you can do your animatronic skeleton, which it's not uh, a super complicated project. So I think this will be, everyone will do great. It'll be a good time. Also, I'll talk a little bit about the shortage of parts uh, that I've been hearing about. I know that a lot of people have had problems with the sending and receiving boards. I believe that Servo City has actually discontinued those. Uh, and I can talk more about this later in the stream as people come in, because I know that this is something that a lot of people have been emailing me about. A lot of people are very interested in it. Uh, so I can say it a few times that Servo City has discontinued those. I don't think they're coming back in stock. I don't have any good alternatives at the moment. 
Uh, I've been looking around to see if there's any like other convenient way of doing like your servo extensions other than of course just running like the long servo wire uh like really long you know like strips of these um because that's it's a lot of wire and it's like inconvenient also depending on how long you make your extensions you can have signal loss and they do make little like boosters that you can attach to your long cables that will boost the signal um, but again, I have not had a lot of experience working with those yet, um, so I will continue to do more research, see what I find, uh, but yeah, that's the current situation. <laughs> Hello everyone! Hello Lissa! How's it going? Uh, let's see, what else was I going to say before we start? So yeah, starting at 3, kind of, I might wait just a little bit, give people some time to come in. I hope you all are having a wonderful spooky season already. I have been feeling very much this spooky. Got all my spooky things. Got my like whole table decked out and everything. Oh, I got my pumpkins. I forgot to put my pumpkins out. I have a bunch of pumpkins over there. Should I just put them on the couch? No, I'll probably sit on them. I have all my little pumpkins on the mantle and things. It's very festive here. I'm getting all excited. I hope you guys have a lot of fun. Halloween things planned for this year. I know some people have been asking me what I've been planning on doing this year for Halloween, uh, if I've been doing anything new. Um, and I did, like, two years ago, redo the Pirates show with an added character, uh, some added scenery, and a whole new, like, audio track. Or, like, audio show, kind of. Uh, of course, that never happened because we had a tornado warning the first year and it was way too windy to, like, do them. And then second year with COVID, we didn't do the full, like, show or anything. So I don't know if this year we're going to do the full pirate show. I'm not at home. Uh, my sister, who also is a big part of our Halloween, like, decorations, is all the way across the country. So I'm not quite sure what's going to happen this year, but no matter what, we're going to be having a good time. So yeah. Never too early to decorate family. Of course. You're right, Mark. That's a good point. <laughs> and it is also maybe, like, I don't know. It's, I don't know how much time I'm going to have in October to, like, do my YouTube and streams and things. I know that actually today is Castle Park's opening night for their Halloween event, Castle Dark. I hope that's going well for them. Just a couple more minutes. We'll start the stream in a bit. Hope y'all are doing well. Hello, hello, welcome. Yeah. Set up my own animatronic theme park. I would love to. <laughs> We're working on some stuff at school. Um, not quite sure what we'll be doing with that yet, but... We've been discussing the different animatronic displays that we'll be working on, and I'm very excited for that. I cannot wait. I still don't know what I'm going to make it. I have a couple options of things for school. I might post more, like, you know, work-in-progress videos of what I'm working on on Instagram, maybe. I haven't posted on Instagram in a while. I've been busy. I've been busy with everything. I'm really sorry, people. <laughs> so I better put up videos of that opening. Yes. Uh... Hello! Welcome, everyone. Let's see. I got all my stuff. I hope I have, like, everything here. Again, I have not had, like, a whole lot of time to prepare for this. Uh, because I've just been, like, really slammed with, like, just life and school and all sorts of things. Um, so I've not really had a chance to double check everything. Um, but if I don't have it here with me, I can at least talk about it and look up pictures and everything. Um, let's see what people are doing. Ooh, neck deep in an RGB LED controller box built at the moment. That sounds fun. You already are Imagineer, as they say in Disney. Thank you, Mark. That's nice. Imagineering would be really cool. That's probably where I would like to go after I graduate. That would be fun. And more than fun. It would also be, like, I feel like very fitting. I just want to, like, make good animatronics. And they do make some very good animatronics. <laughs> Ooh, a question. Do you need to supply power to the SSE32U when it is plugged into your computer? Uh, I'll answer this again in a little bit as we go over that. Just make sure everyone hears it. 
Uh, yes, you do. You will need to supply a separate power source. It's not like an Arduino, because an Arduino, of course, you can just plug into your computer and it takes the power. Uh, it's like powered off of the USB. SSE32U is different. Uh, and the reason for that is because it's powering servos and servos take like a lot of power, uh, which is also why you probably shouldn't just plug a servo into an Arduino. You should have it not draw the power from the Arduino. So if you're having, okay, if you have a servo plugged into Arduino, you need to power that servo separately from the Arduino. SSE32U has its own power supply, so it can power all those servos. Like I said, I'll, I can talk about that a little bit more when we look at the box setup. Um, I don't believe I have the power supply that I use with it here with me. Actually, I do. I have one of them. I have like the big power supply, but I'll go over that in a little bit. Did you do measurements for fixing all the skeleton? Oh, I have, okay. I don't have the measurements for these. Let's see, is it on the, yes, okay, on the camera. I don't have these measurements here. I figured I do have a ruler with me. I figured we could talk about that. I threw together that bracket blueprint like a few minutes, <laughs> not a few minutes, like an hour ago. I was like, ooh, that's probably something people would like. Sorry, I've been a little, <laughs> a little, a little busy. Um, but yeah, we can use a ruler. We can take a look at that when I go over this. Because um, this isn't exactly like very mathematical here. Um, it doesn't have to be like super precise, I've found. As long as it's mostly within the general. Because also these skeletons themselves aren't very like consistent always uh, with the spacing of things and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, but as long as you get one of these kinds of skeletons that's made from the same mold, uh, it should all be relatively close enough. Uh, hello! Good to see you too, Masato, okay? Haven't heard from you in a while. It's probably because I have been busy and have not responded to emails. I'm very sorry. <laughs> um, send your resume to Garner Holt. We talk about Garner Holt a lot in class. We talk about a lot of different animatronics companies. Um... I might, yeah, who knows, who knows where I'm going to end up in three years, <laughs> we'll figure it out as I go, but yeah, that's a really cool company, if anyone doesn't know of them, Garner Holt Productions does, they do a lot of animatronics, uh, they've done stuff for Disney, they've done stuff for other theme parks, um, they got really cool, really cool stuff. Okay, it is 3.03. Let me see. Airplane bits on the skull. Okay, yes. So airplane bits on the skull is wondering distances apart. Yeah, I can do that. I can definitely, definitely talk about that. Actually, another thing that I found is I don't use, like, measurements or a ruler when I'm putting these on. I do it based on, like, like landmarks on the skeleton, kind of. Um, so I don't know if you can see if I move him over a little bit more. Uh, of course, there's a delay on the camera, so I can't see when I move him if that works. Oh, well. <laughs> Uh, so there's conveniently this little seam that goes around the back of the skull. I don't know the medical term. <laughs> I'm not a medical person, but yes, this little thing. Um, and I just base it based on the line. And then also there's like, it ridges up over here. And again, like I said, I can go over this in a little bit more detail once we get to that. Um, and we can also pull out the ruler and just take a look at what those measurements would be if we want to know more specifics. So many questions today. I just hope you checked out the Home Depot skeletons. I always check out the Home Depot skeletons. They're really amazing. Also, that 12-foot skeleton, uh, Nelson Barros, actually the guy that works on all the life hype stuff, he's the track skull software dude, uh, turned one of those 12-foot skeletons into a triaxis skull, and it is like crazy awesome. <laughs> I was like, yes, someone has to do that. Someone's got to make the giant skeleton animatronic. Uh, and his, he had, he has like a tutorial on how to do that. Um, I can't remember what the like website, which if it's like instructables or what, um, but definitely go check that out. Look up Home Depot 12 foot skeleton DIY three axis talking school, something like that. Um, hard time finding a, he's like a battery pack. Yes. You can use a battery pack uh, or any sort of like power supply, like adapter. Um, I will say if you are powering digital servos, I know there's always been the question of like, 
they draw a lot of current and it's hard typically when you buy like a 6 volt power supply it's going to come with like the ability to do like 3 amps or 2 amps or something like that um, but digital servos not in this project right now but if you're working on other projects that use stronger servos uh, they do make on Amazon power adapters that are 6 volts 10 amps for like 20 bucks I've used these uh, I used that in the arm when I did the moving arm on the skeleton for Castle Park, uh, which is why this guy is missing an arm here, is because I was testing that out back then when I did that. Um, but yeah, you can find all sorts of power supplies on Amazon that work, or battery packs also, you can do those as well. Um, dedicated animatronics school. Brilliant that there's a dedicated animatronics school. Yeah, that's great. Brand new. Never done before, but they were like, hey, this is something that is, there's a big industry for it, and there's not a whole lot, like, not really a path to get there. So they're like, yeah, let's, let's make that path. Let's make this, like, real now. So many people here. Hello, everyone. Hello. Everyone's in the chat. This is great. It's already off to a better start than I was expecting. <laughs> so many skeleton models around now. Yeah. It's crazy, and unfortunately, this one seems to be less favored by companies these days, which I like it the best, honestly. I think I ranted about this last time. Um, it looks better, I think, in my opinion, than, like, the Crazy Bones, uh, just because the proportions are off. The Crazy Bones are stiff. Their spine is, like, straight. These guys have the actual, like, curve in their spine. Uh, I know Crazy Bones are more robust, but... I don't know. Also, their faces are, like, more squished. I don't know. It's just... I don't like the way they look as much. <laughs> Stop motion school. That would be cool. Um, huge animatronic. Yes, giant animatronic. That'd be awesome. How do skeleton? Yes. I'd love to see that. Email with the songs of the skeletons. 12 volt supply. Remove from old desktop computers. Tour online. Day five went out. Yes. Ooh, meanwhile makes a whole series of DC power supplies. Great. Yeah, there's a lot of different a lot of different places out there. Um, you can get these from. Always be careful folks, so if you're gonna be working with high lots of power. Don't let anybody get hurt. I wouldn't want that. Eight PM here, I'm sorry it's so late. I was trying to find a good time to do this. Uh okay, it's almost three ten. I'm gonna go ahead and get started then. Alright. First off, I wanted to say to everyone, I know I said this like before the stream started. Uh, this is not the stream that I was, like, hoping to do. This is not how I wanted it to go. Uh, I wanted this to be something where I could sit down with the brand new skeleton and just go through all the steps, actually build it into an animatronic, um, and we could all, like, build along in real time. However, uh, I, if anyone hasn't heard, I'm now going to grad school. <laughs> I'm getting my master's in animatronics, um, and that was really unexpected. It kind of now, like, I've moved out of my house. Um, it's taken up a lot of my time. And unfortunately, I can't really, like, build a skeleton the way I want to do it in an apartment. I don't have, like, all the tools and everything. I don't have, like, the ability to really feasibly do that. I also don't have the time anymore. Um, but I figured that I still... It was still important to me to make sure that this happened in some form or another, because um, I know a lot of people bought the parts, and I know a lot of people are excited to make this this year. So without further ado, let's talk about how to make an animatronic skeleton. So with me, I have one of my skeletons that is already built into an animatronic, uh, but I've gone ahead and like taken off some of the pieces so that we can look at like where the screw holes are, and then of course how to apply things. We can look at those other pieces in more like detail. Uh, and the first thing you're gonna do is if you have your skeleton with you, this is kind of what it looks like when it comes from the store. Let me check on the computer real quick what this looks like. It's kind of hard because there's like a really long delay on YouTube, so it can be hard to tell like if I have positioned this correctly because I can't check. All right, so. This is how your skeleton is going to come from the store. If you have the right skeleton, it most likely has, and I know it's hard to see, there's a string that comes out of the top of the skull, and the skull is bolted, it's like pops down onto this little knob on the end of the neck, and there are two screws 
that are screwing it in here. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, if I can do it, <laughs> sometimes it's really hard to undo this knot. Hopefully also I can get it back through in time on the stream. Sometimes it's a little tricky. I'll show you guys the tips and tricks on how to get this string back through the skull once you're ready to put it back on. Because that can be a little tricky. I also use tape for that. Um, and I'll show you why in a little bit, why the tape is important. And I also found out this morning that I don't have tape in my apartment right now. Uh, but I do have some like old stickers, like sticker sheets. So I've been trying to cut little strips from those uses tape. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Um, okay, so the first thing you're going to do, you have your skeleton, uh, we're just going to take the head off and look at that and start talking about the jaw, because the jaw might probably be the first thing you'll want to install. Um, so don't forget two screws here, they're screwing in this way. You should take these off first, and once you untie, there's like a knot at the base of the head here, once you untie this knot, you should be able to gently work the skull off of that there. So now you just have your loose skull. Now, mine already has the jaw servo in it, but I will talk about how to cut this hole, how to install it and everything. Uh, so you can go ahead and slide this off here. I'm a little scared to slide this off on stream because I'm scared I won't be able to get back on, but we'll do our best. So we always do our best here. <laughs> All right, let's move him off to the side and take a look at this skull. All right, so here's your skull. I have gone ahead, like I said, installed these little hooks or these little horns. These aren't gonna be here. I'll talk about this in a second. First thing I'm gonna talk about is just the jaw movement itself. When you first get these skulls, sometimes if you like open and close the jaw a little bit, you'll notice that it's kind of like there's a lot of resistance because mine, if I tilt the skull, it just falls open. Uh, and that's what you want because you want the servos to have like the least amount, like take the least amount of like strength and force to pull it open. Uh, because I've found that over the years, of course the jaw servos, these are, I believe, I don't remember if these are micro or sub micro servos. I'm pretty sure they're micro. Uh, I like to use the HS65HB, you can find that on Servo City. It is a high-tech servo, you can find it other places as well. Uh, but they don't have a lot of strength, they are very robust. You can get these in Metal Gear. It's just that over time the jaw opening and closing fast, especially singing a song, has a tendency to wear it out, so of course we don't want... We want to make sure it has the easiest job that we can give it. So, how you can fix that if your jaw is a little too like rigid and hard to move, you can actually very gently pop the, uh, there we go, you can actually pop the jaw out of the socket. You gotta be very gentle, like I said, you don't want to damage it at all. Uh, and how you can do that is you can take a flat bladed screwdriver, and I'm probably not gonna do it now because this skeleton is also very old. This is not a flat bladed screwdriver, but you get the idea. You can take a flat bladed screwdriver. Let me zoom in a little bit. <laughs> Let's see, can you see that? Yes, all right. You can take a flat bladed screwdriver and put it in between the jaw and the skull and then gently bend it this way until it pops out. Be careful that it doesn't like deform the skull where you're pressing on it. Um, but if you very gently do that, you should be able to just pop the jaw out, and then once the jaw has been removed from the skull, let me see if I can do it actually. Yeah, okay, there we go. I, sometimes you can also do it with your fingers if it's loose enough, but usually they aren't when you first get them. Let me just pop this out right here. Ah, it's really stuck in there. All right, I'm just gonna leave that in there. You guys get the idea. You just pop it out on the both sides. What to do if you break the jaw hinge? Uh, try not to. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, I've never had that problem. These jaw hinges, I know the jaws themselves are solid plastic. Um, the skulls are hollow, but the jaws are solid, so they shouldn't break off. But if you do manage to do that, 
I'm not sure. Maybe try gluing it back on. I know that there's usually not a lot of force, like, up and down, like, this way. So if it does break off, maybe as long as you have enough of, like, or maybe you can also drill a wire in there, like a thick wire, uh, and just have that be your hinge. Uh, but once you have this disconnected, these holes, this hole on the side, take a drill bit and very gently, very slowly, not very much, you can drill the hole a little bit wider and that will make it slightly more, like there's less, you know, it's less tight, there's less friction on it. Uh, and that should make your jaw like fall open all looser. Uh, so that should help with any strain on the servo. And then once you're done, you can just pop it back in. But again, don't make that hole too wide or else you also might have issues where the jaw doesn't want to stay in. Well, this goes into your eyes, incredibly loose. Cause if you wanted to, that's great. It's great if it's already loose. Uh, if you don't think that you need any, like if it just, okay. If you can take the skull and you just turn it and it falls open, that's probably good enough. You probably won't need to do any sort of alterations on that. But if it's stiff and you have to like take your hand and like force it open, then you'll need to make a little bit of modifications. All right, you use a paper clip, work fine. Sounds great, yes. Any sort of metal like wire or anything. Um, you can also even use, if you have extra wire that you're using for the back of the skull, uh, you might be able to try cutting some of these, drilling a tiny hole like through where that was and then sticking it through, seeing if that helps. Um, if you've broken or broken off your hinge. All right. Once you have the jaw fixed the way that you like it, you can install the servo. Now, my servo is already installed. I did not have a small enough screwdriver to undo the screws to take it out to show you guys. So we're just gonna have to look at the servo in it. Now, this part is perhaps one of the trickiest. Here, let me see if I can. Need more light over here. Okay, let's get focus. This part is one of the trickiest uh, parts of making the skeletons. Um, is cutting this square hole for the jaw servo. Uh, and what I recommend is you take your servo itself, uh, whatever servo you're going to use, place that down. You see how mine is like slightly far off, like, you know, let me get my ruler out and do this more precisely. <laughs> uh, let's do this in centimeters because it's much more smaller. Wow, even millimeters. It's maybe like three or four millimeters up from this hole. You don't want it too close to the hole because you don't want to, of course, interfere with the uh, ball and socket joint at all. Uh, but you also don't want it too close to the jaw because that can cause issues with the angle of the horn moving. Um, so again, come down about three millimeters from that hole, maybe four millimeters. Place your servo itself onto the skull and then trace around it. And my recommendation for cutting this hole is the same thing that I recommend for cutting the holes on your control box. And I can talk about that later as well. Uh, but what I like to do is I drill out using a power drill and like a drill bit. I drill out a, like a little hole inside. So let me, let me actually show some piece of paper that might be a little bit easier. All right. Here's how you make that. Let me go grab my tractor real quick. And we'll be right back. All right. Here is Cat's Guide to Cutting Beautiful Square Holes. I know there's a lot of different ways to do it, uh, depending on, of course, the material or what tools you have. So let's say you have marked out, here is your square hole that you want to cut. Um, you can use either just a regular drill bit or you can use, let's see if I have one here to show. Uh, I do not have mine here with me, I do not think. That's all right. You can also use a step drill bit. Uh, I recommend those. Let me pull up a picture of that real quick so we all know what we're looking at. Let me put it on the screen. 
Ah, technology. All right, let me share. My oh my gosh. <laughs> This is a challenge, my friends. But that's all right. We'll figure it out. Okay. Um, screen. Display. Is this working? This is not working. There we go. That's wow. Woo. <laughs> Here we go. Step drill bits. Uh, and what these do as, is that as you're drilling, it just keeps making like a wider and wider hole. Um, it's nice and convenient. It means you don't have to like change drill bits often to keep, you know, incrementing up. Uh, so let me get rid of that. Let me go back to my thing there. Whoops. Ah, behind the scenes. Wow, magic. <laughs> All right. Back to what I was saying on this. Let me actually switch to, let's see if this works better. Whoops, that's not the right one. This is the right one. Yay, I can work a computer. I should know how to do it. I have a degree in it. <laughs> All right. So what you do? Here's what you've marked out on the skull. Also, what you've marked out on your box if you want to cut it. Um. Where's my pen? Here's my pen. First thing you're gonna do, you can either take four, like take a drill bit, and you can do like, oh, let me just drill out whatever, you know, just drill out in the middle. You can either do it with a step drill bit and drill like two big holes. Or you can draw, draw, uh, ah, I cannot speak today. Or you can drill out four holes. I like doing that. Just try to cut out as much as you can, whatever. Now there's two ways also to do this. People will say you can also use a Dremel tool. Um, you can as well if you have a Dremel tool. I know not everyone has one. So if you do want to do this with a Dremel tool, this will be the drill version. Is this going to be right side up? Okay. Ta-da! <laughs> And this is your like Dremel. Okay, if you take a Dremel tool, you can also do your thing where you cut out a square in the middle. And I found that of course, if you use a Dremel, you're gonna have all these like, you know, nasty edges, which is fine. But once you get to one of these parts, you take a metal file, uh, and I have those listed on the parts list. I also have mine with me somewhere around here. Let me go grab those real quick. In my little tool place. All right, my favorite part: making it nice, clean cuts. Take a metal file, this one here, just your nice, simple, square one, and you go into your like hole that you've cut here, and you just file away. And you want to get this like as close to the line as possible without going over. You can just file that edge into like a really nice clean square until eventually it's all cut out and you're just left with a really nice, really clean, perfectly square hole. That's my favorite way of doing it. I know there's like a lot of other different ways to do it, I think. Uh, but that's what I used on the box for Castle Park. Let me see if I have images of that. Uh, and like I said, it just makes like a really nice, nice cut. I don't believe that's what I did here. I ended up with some sketchy edges. But again, also, if you do end up with sketchy edges, it's not a problem. Uh, no one's going to see underneath the skull except for you. Um, it looks nicer on the box, but again, if you're just making the box to be put somewhere no one's going to see it, it's totally fine if you do just want to take a Dremel tool and just cut out, like, a hole that looks like this. It's a little sketchy. That's fine. It's all up to you. Those are just my tips if you want really good-looking, clean holes. I like those. Uh, would you recommend using a hot knife for hole cutting, or if not, why not? I probably would not recommend it because uh, it depends on what the plastic is, because you don't want to be breathing those fumes unless you have like a super amazing ventilator mask. But even then, probably not a good idea. Um, but I'm not sure. Maybe. Brazil here. And France. I saw that earlier. Hello all around the world. That's amazing. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the animatronic stream. Good teacher cat. Thank you so much. How long does the filing take? It depends on how close you get it to the edge. Again, if you can get that initial like cut pretty close, 
not very long because these files they're like also depends on like your grit of your file or whatever um usually the plastic is like super soft so if you just like go really fast and then you work back and forth maybe each hole would take i don't know five to ten minutes probably it's not it's not a whole lot. It's not like you're sitting there for like half an hour filing. Um, it tends to go pretty quickly, I've found. So yes. Cat's tips on clean holes. We love it. <laughs> Making things look professional. Since 2012. Alright, so. Once you've got your hole cut out for that servo. Let me get this thing to focus. Focus. There we go. Once you get that hole cut out for the servo. Again, make sure also that it is, you probably want to go a little under your, like, drawn on edges, because you can always go back and file a little bit larger later, because uh, you want to make sure it's best if the servo has, like, a little nice snug fit in there. Um, it's okay if it's, like, a little bit loose. You just want to make sure you also have enough room to drill and do your screws. Uh, and, of course, these screws are very small. These, I believe, are the screws that actually came with the servo themselves. Um, if you order, I don't know if this is true of all places you order high-tech service from, uh, but of course Service City, I believe all the other places as well, they should come with the mounting hardware as well. So I just put, I only use one on each side for the jaw, I have found that it's not really a big issue if there's just two in total, because um, this servo doesn't want to go anywhere anyway. So one on this side, of course there is one on the other. And then once you have your servo all nice and in there, also, you can take the horn off while you're working on it. I'm just leaving the horn on right now because I have it, like, centered to there. It's not screwed in. I need to get the screw in there. Let me check real quick. Toronto, Canada. Great Britain, England. Wow. Wow. Worldwide. It's crazy. Welcome, everyone. I'm so glad you're all here. I was not expecting anyone to come today, so this is fantastic. <laughs> I'm so glad people are here. So glad we're all having a good time. Learn about skeletons. Uh, questions. The part that holds the jaw on the servo. Yes, we're gonna about to go over that. So right now, all we've done, for those of you who are coming in late, uh, we've drilled the hole, and I just one more thing I want to mention about that. Just talked about drilling the hole for inserting the servo. We haven't talked about this. Actually, I'm going to take this off. We haven't talked about any of this yet. So, you've drilled your hole, you've inserted your servo, you've screwed it in. One more thing about that hole, you'll take your file and you're going to want to file a little tiny, do you see how there's like a little rectangle hole coming off of the side there? You can take your file uh, or take anything else you have, even a drill bit, even if you just want to like drill a little hole right there. You just need something that the wire can come out of and the servo still have like a snug fit. You can even, I mean, honestly, drill the hole like over here or something and just feed the wire through as long as that wire can get through. Uh, I like this way of doing it right on the side because if you do drill a hole, you might not be able to fit this thing through. But this way, you just slide the whole thing in and it fits like that. With, of course, the cord sticking out here as you're sliding it in. Um, will I use Python to program the servos? Not today. Uh, or not usually with these kinds of skeletons if you're just doing a show. I did use Python to program them for the Castle Park, but that's a different project. Um, we're not probably going to go over programming today. Uh, I just don't think I'll have time for that. Um, but seeing how this goes, uh, I'll let me see if I can find another time to do a programming stream, because uh, I don't think that would be too tricky to set up and do. Uh, answering more questions. What is the length of the ball joint arm thingy? Yes, I'll go over that in two seconds. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we all waited for you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Try to design and try to show. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Um, let me talk about this thing. This weird, weird skull jaw, uh, jaw connection thing. Okay. Actually, let me go grab the parts of this. Sorry, I keep getting up to get all these parts. I was like, again, I know I said this earlier, I got up at 7 this morning. I was setting up the stream. I have not had, like, it's been a crazy day. Let me go grab those. I'll be right back.
Well, that's funny. I didn't bring them with me to my apartment when I came from home. That's all right. We have the internet. Let me go on my parts list real quick. Desktop. Where is my servo? Not servo. Skeleton parts list. I should have had that open. Full parts list. And then I can just pull the links from here. Uh, so those of you that are perhaps a little behind or just joining us, we're about to talk about... I already put the servo in here. We're about to talk about this arm that connects it to the jaw. All right, and I am pulling up images of these separate pieces because altogether this looks a little weird, but we're going to look at it piece by piece and talk about it. Because um, there's honestly, there's about like two parts to making the skeleton, really. Like two halves. There's the... Um, the jaw, and then there's the, like, neck movement. Let me open these links real quick. And then this one. Okay. So. Uh... What if I can do share my screen and talk? I'll just go back and forth. Um... Let me pull this up here, and let me pull this down here, give me two seconds my friends. I'm going to switch my display real quick so that it is, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, Alright, we're just going to do it this way. Alright, so that jaw connection, whoops, where did my thing go? Here it is. Okay, that jaw connection is made up of two parts that are connected using a uh, 256 threaded rod the first part being first part being this the ball link you'll see here's an image over here i don't use this piece also i may be doing this incorrectly but this is just how i've always done it and it works so if it works it works <laughs> i use this piece and this piece this this black uh, ball here, if we go back to our skeleton, is right here on the jaw. And for people who would like the measurements, let me get my ruler out. I like to place it, and again, I don't usually take measurements when I'm doing the skeletons. Uh, I normally just go based on the like features of the skeleton. I place it about right in the center of like in between the jaw, let me see if I can move this around a little bit better, sorry folks. This camera is, I just got this camera. Also, thank you everyone on Patreon for supporting me. I was able, I've been like getting everything ready for this uh, YouTube stuff. I was able to buy a new webcam because uh, I'm not at home anymore and I can't borrow my mom's. <laughs> I got a webcam so I can do more streaming stuff because I also want to do more Arduino projects. Um, so thanks Patreon people, you're making this possible. Uh, but anyway, back to the skeleton. So like I said, it's halfway in between this edge of the jaw and this edge of the jaw. If we would like to pull out our ruler... Oops, I'm so sorry, I just hit the mic. Um, if we measure, like, directly down from, like, perpendicular to this line of the jaw, it is about one centimeter in. And if we measure about straight up and down from this side of the jaw, it is about one and a half centimeters, like, up from the bottom of the jaw. But like I said, just kind of right in that area. And how you install it, it's got a little screw. Uh, I just take a really, like, tiny, tiny drill bit, drill a really tiny hole. Um, I don't, like, tap the hole or anything, because it kind of taps itself because the plastic is so soft. Um, so you just, like I said, just drill a little tiny hole, screw it in, it should screw itself in and stay there. This is very, very, like, well, you know, put in there. It's not going to go anywhere. Whoops, let me move this here. I know I keep, sorry, I keep moving around. It's hard <laughs> doing so many things at once. Try my best, everyone, and I appreciate everyone's patience and funness. Let me check the, see if there's any questions in the chat real quick before I talk about the next thing I was going to say. There we go. Okay. Doing like five million things at once. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, so many questions. 
<laughs> Let me read the questions real quick. Hole, straw server hole a bit too big, the surface is uneven, support at the edges using a hot glue gun. Ooh, that's a really good idea. Not sure how long it'll hold up. That's really interesting. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, that's a good, that's a good idea. Uh, come from all over to hear my wisdom. Thank you so much, Adventure Man. <laughs> I try, I try to be as, like, understandable as possible. I know that can be really hard because animatronics can be really complicated. And I know a lot of this is just kind of like, I mean, even down to the measurements where I'm like, well, you just kind of put it in the middle. And I know sometimes that can be a little, I don't know, difficult to follow along, but I'm doing my best. Because uh, I, I really want everyone, kids, adults, everyone to be able to do this. Uh, so I'm glad that everyone's here and trying. That's amazing. I'm so happy that like people are building skeletons. It's so much fun. Uh, technical name is Thingy. Yes, it is. I am authority. I can say that. <laughs> Oh, I'll be able to do more live streams. I want to do more live streams. Live streams are really fun. I want to do, like, I want to do, of course, the programming this skeleton live stream where I talk about the software uh, and we just, like, do a program. I will have to find some audio that I can play that YouTube won't strike me down for. Uh, so if anyone's got recommendations for anything that, we, we, like, wouldn't be copyrighted, that'd be cool. For, like, audio that I can use to program too. On this part, you talk about how you connect the ball socket to the jawbone. Yes. Hot glue. Both came loose. There should just be... You should just be able to drill, like I said, a really tiny hole. You might... The drill bit sometimes might... If you can see how small this hole is, it might go through the other side of the skull sometimes. Sorry, it's not focusing. Focus! I dislike that these webcams are autofocus. I couldn't find a webcam that was, like, manual focus that was good. I'll move it down a little bit. Focus on me. Ah. Um, so if you can see how tiny that hole is, the screw, if we look back at our picture of the ball and socket, where did that go? That's not it. Let me get rid of that. If we look at our picture of the ball and socket, let me pull it up and I can't see it. There we go. If you look at the picture of the ball and socket, um, this screw, it's kind of thick-ish. It's not too bad. Um, about the same thickness as the, like, part that connects the ball to that little, like, washer-looking piece. Um, again, like I said, if you just drill a really tiny hole, it's okay if it comes out the other side. Switch back here. Whoops. There we go. It's okay if it comes back out the other side, because sometimes you can, like, take your fingernail and just kind of smush in the little plastic bits. Um, also, no one's going to see it from really, really far away. Or if you're very not into that, um, I'm sure you can like plug it with other things like maybe hot glue and paint it um, or anything else really. I don't really worry about it too much because I know that no one's going to see it. Um, so yeah, that's how you attach the ball part. Now, of course, with that ball and socket, you have the socket. Very important. And you also have another, let's see if I can find the other part here. The other half of the jaw connection arm thingy <laughs> is the swivel ball link. So both of these pieces together create, let me go back to my thing here. Both of them work together to create this arm. So on this side you have, let me bring my light over here. So on this side, you have your swivel, your like swivel link, and this is your servo horn. Sorry, it's not focusing. I cannot get this thing to focus. Also, ah, let me go back and make sure everyone can still hear me and all that good stuff. Um, real, real quick. Reading, I'm just reading the chat real quick to make sure everyone's like still good. I'm not like just streaming to nothing like my videos cut out or anything. Um, so much in the chat. Uh, okay. Oops. Okay. I just accidentally put all my windows down. That's all right. All right. Cool. It looks like we're good. I'm going to keep going on this real quick. I'll get to the questions in two seconds. Um... Talk to fill the holes. Yes, that's a good idea. 
Um, add on the skeleton's face if you want to modify features. That's also a really good idea. If you want to add, like, sharper edges and stuff, that'd be cool. Um, so yes, so here you have your swivel link. You can see I've just, oops, it's kind of coming undone there. I've just used the hardware that comes with it. Sorry, this doesn't want to focus. I can't get this to focus any better. Okay. I've used the hardware that comes with it. There's the screw. I had to drill the hole larger at the end of the servo horn. I had to fit the screw through. Sorry, it's blurry. Ah! This is a Logitech webcam. C920 something. Autofocus. That's my review if anyone wants to know. <laughs> um, so you drill a hole in the end of your servo horn for the jaw. You stick the screw that came with your swivel arm. You can use your little, like, you know, nut and your little, like, I don't remember what this is called. It's like your washer, but it's like got the little bevel on the end of it. Um, so that connects your swivel to the end of the servo horn. Now, to connect the swivel ball link to the socket, I just used a piece of the 256 threaded rod, because make sure when you do buy this, and it should be on the parts list, uh, I got mine for 256 threaded rods, and I just twist these together um, to get them to screw in together. Sometimes it doesn't want to fit on these. I don't know why it should be for 256. I don't know if I'm just like misreading that or misunderstanding that. Um, sometimes I should like drill it wider. But anyway, you screw these together. Uh, I will measure this length if anyone wants to know. This is, you can see there, it's a little over one and a half inches, just barely one and a half inches altogether. Um, my friends in not America, it is, ah, like four centimeters. Look at that. <laughs> Almost four centimeters, a little over four centimeters. Uh, okay. So also, if you find that you want to change the length of this, and here's the nice thing about threading it together, uh, let's say it ended up being too short or too long, or you just want to like keep playing with it and testing out how that affects the way the jaw moves, uh, you can just keep like screwing it in or unscrewing it, and that will adjust, of course, the length of your rod here. Uh, and that can be very handy for if, you know, something warps over time if you accidentally heat this up somehow or I've never had an issue with that um, but who knows could happen this plastic plastic likes to change so once you have that all set up you're gonna want to put the horn back on the servo but here is an important step in the process that we should not forget about and that is well you know how, like, do I just put it on? Of course, you're just going to put it on here where it's going to connect. But how do you know that when you plug in the servo, it's not going to like, oh, you know, want to be back here and say, oh, I can only move 180 degrees back here, which you don't want. Uh, so what you want to do before you put your horns on your servo, this is true of any servo, any animatronic you do, make sure you plug this in to like a servo tester or your program or anything. Uh, let me go grab my survey test real quick to show that. I don't think I have the power source for it, um, so I can't do ah. Okay. Got my handy dandy servo tester. Uh, I should have put this on the parts list. If anyone ever makes any animatronics ever, or does this animatronic, these are super duper handy to have. Servo tester. Fantastic. You just plug your servos in here. You can turn the knobs and it'll turn them. It'll also center them if you, like, turn them off. Uh, do I have my... I might have my... I do have my power supply right here. Let me see if I can plug that in real quick. Look at turn on my servos real quick. In the meantime, how's it going, everyone? Hope you are all having a very good spooky Halloween season so far. I know it's only September. I say only September 25th as if that's not getting close enough. Especially with everyone who does animatronic things. If anyone's ever done big Halloween projects before, you all know. <laughs> Halloween starts very early when you have a lot to get done. Uh, let's see if I can plug this in. 
Perfect. And for those of you who are just joining us or have not been here, uh, we have just put the jaw servo into the skull, and we have put together the servo horn that controls the jaw. And now, before we connect that horn to the servo, we're going to want to plug it in to make sure it is centered before we place that horn onto the servo. Everything's good. Okay. Also, sorry if there's ever, um, if I don't get to a question in time, there is a very, very big delay between what what I'm doing now and what is happening <laughs> on YouTube. So it's a little tricky. Um, so I may always be look like I'm late to questions. I'm sorry about that. Uh, let's take a look at this. What servos do you recommend using for things like this? Um, in general, I really like the high tech servos because they are high quality, uh, especially for a good price. I actually just did for school a huge servo comparison chart in Excel that like goes through all these different brands and everything to compare like specs and stuff, um, which I'm going to be putting up on the Patreon and talking about in a little bit, um, cause that kind of has a story behind it. <laughs> uh, but for this specific servo right here, I'm using the HS 65 HB. Um, it's a bit on the pricey side. I believe this one is like $20 maybe. Um, it's, it's nice. I like these. Out of all the servos I've done, it seems to be the like mostly quiet. I've also tried the HS55, uh, HS55s in here. Those are the blue ones from High Tech, and they're also a little cheaper. They're like nine bucks. Uh, but the HS55s are extremely grindy. Um, but any that's the nice thing about servos and mostly standardized sizes is that this, I believe, is a sub micro size. Uh, so any sub micro should work here. Um, but yes, I like the HS65 HBs. But also be gentle with your servos, guys. Don't move them too fast for way too long like I've done. <laughs> I found that if you use a uh, joystick like I use to program my skeletons, if you use the actual joystick motion itself to do the draw instead of the button, uh, you will really prolong the life of your servos. I used to use the button, uh, and I would just kind of go crazy with it. I'd be like, yeah, hitting every single syllable. Uh, and that ended up being too much, and a lot of times I would burn out my servos throughout the night on Halloween, uh, which is expensive and not fun to have an animatronic just stop working during the night. Um, so, but since I've started using the uh, joystick to actually do the mouth motions, not only have I been able to get more like precise, like oh, there's like you know you can kind of open his mouth, he can see like act like he's louder to be like open it more or maybe he's like quietly whispering so it opens less you get more of like control over it and then also it's not as fast it's not as like demanding on the servo so you shouldn't have any issues or theoretically shouldn't have as many issues with servo burnout uh so yes let's test this real quick i hope this works i also haven't plugged this skeleton in in like a year maybe <laughs> cool all right, so if we want to just, I plugged it into our servo tester here. I'm just going to pop this on real quick just so you can see it moving. Oh, it's upside down. Oop, there you go. Oh, that's not the right one. There we go. So you can see as I move the dial, it's moving that horn around. Okay, so let me take this off real quick. So we want this to be centered. If I hit this button, oops, sorry, let me bring this back into view. If I hit this button right here on the servo tester, I should center that, which means we're good to go to put on that horn now. So let me just unplug it. And also these servo testers um, usually don't come with power supplies. You can power them from a battery pack. I'm actually using the power supply that I use on the full skeleton himself. I've just taken the little, like, sorry, of course this is dark. It's hard to see. I need to get a white, like, thing to see on. I just don't have one in my apartment. Um, one of these barrel jack connectors, and then it's a screw terminal here, a screw terminal there. I just used wires to connect it. Sorry, let me bring it on frame. There we go. And that's how I am powering this. This is also the exact same way that I power the SSC32U. I will talk about that in a little bit when we do that. Uh, let me check the chat real quick. Any questions? Da -da -da -da. You need one of the service testers. Yes, I wish I would have brought mine with me to California. That, or when I did the roller coaster project, I was, I had a ton of servos that I was like, I need to easily center these real quick. And I needed to make sure the 
because I was using an Arduino and I could, it was a long story. But yes, if you hate debugging and spending hours fixing problems, it's super duper convenient to just plug in your servo to say, are my servos actually working? Like, is it the servo dead or is there something wrong in my controller? Um, so I highly recommend having these if you ever work with servos, they're fantastic. Uh, Joss already used HS65HB. That has been my favorite out of the different ones that I've used so far. I know it's pretty expensive, um, but any sub micro should fit. You can play around with them. Um, summer is just Halloween prep season. You're right. Or if you're like me, it's like all year. <laughs> uh, Halloween, yep, Halloween season builds and yeah, building season always starts in January for me. Same here. I take December off. I'm very lucky that I can take December off. <laughs> That's December. November is putting everything into storage and then December is take break. And then January is like, okay, time to work. And then I started the Castle Park project. They contacted me in February. And I, I worked on that all from February until I shipped it to them in September. Um, where can I study this stuff? Uh, there's a lot of different resources online. There's the Stan Winston School. Uh, they do some stuff, but their stuff I found is more like professional animatronic things, which means usually it involves a lot more like professional tools and equipment. Um, also, their uh, classes aren't free. Some of them are free. Um, also, I recommend them for like other stuff too. They have a lot of really cool like sculpting classes and stuff like that. Um, or if you do want to get an actual degree in it, uh, I'm getting a degree in it. First animatronics program ever. They just started one at UNC School of the Arts. It's a master's degree and I'm getting that right now. <laughs> uh, free alternatives to software you use. I will talk about that more in the software stream that I do. There are free softwares that you can use to like, it kind of depends, depends on what you want to do. Uh, if you want to do a show like I do, um, I haven't really found any that work well. Um, I tried actually recently programming an animatronic with X lights. If anyone knows that is a software that uh, Christmas lights uh, people like to use. It has the capability to program servos, and I can talk more about that and why it did not work really well at all. And it was very, it took like 10 times the amount of time it would have taken. I don't know. I can talk more about that on the software stream. Um, but basically, I have not really found any good free alternatives. If I do, I will put those on the channel. Um, but for the time being, it is what we is. It is what it is. It is what we got. Easier to use the joystick for the jaw instead of the buttons. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. I like the, like, control you get over it. Also, like, I like this, like, the motion. Especially, I like to use the, like, what is this? The Y-axis on the joystick to go forwards and back. You can really get in the, like, I don't know. I feel like you can get the speed that you want, but also, like, the intonation, the inflections and all that. Um, will this live stream be saved? Yes, this live stream is being recorded, and it will be uploaded onto YouTube after the stream is done that is happening yes yes i hope that is automatically happening hold on wait a minute okay it is great <sighs> panicked for two seconds i was like it is recording right <laughs> it's been a long day people i'm sorry if i'm a little wow <laughs> all right uh let me ask this question real quick and let's continue on this um studying in school studying animatronics and your master's in animatronics i just graduated with a bachelor's degree in computer science but now i am getting master's in animatronics i'm not sure where i'll be going after school probably hopefully maybe disney i would like to go there uh yeah have i still got my salacious crumb puppet I have the inner mechanism and I have the head on my bookshelf, but not here with me. Program is the worst bit for me. Yeah, there's a lot of, programming can be really complicated. Um, x lights barely supports moving head spotlights. Yeah, x lights is not, I didn't, I didn't end up using it. We ended up actually last minute, I had to write something. I made a program that would record and replay all the motions on an Arduino or for an Arduino in Python on the computer. Long story short, X-Lights was a nightmare, so we're not using that. 
Yes, check your library for some online resources. Some libraries able to purchase a membership. Yes, Lissa, that's a great point. Check library, lots of fun resources out there for doing things like this. Um, do I own a 3D printer? I do, the Creality Ender 3 Pro. That's it, Creality Ender 3 Pro. Recommended to me by Ava from Ava's Workshop. Uh, she does a lot of 3D printing stuff. Go check out her channel. She also does a lot of fun things there. Um, I really like it. I haven't got a lot of chance to use it yet, but I'm getting distracted. Yes, that's a 3D printer I use. Let me continue on this real quick. So, we've connected the servo onto the skull. It has been installed and everything. It is now centered. So, the last thing we need to do is actually, of course, attach the horn. We've already talked about this arm here, the different pieces that make that up, how long it is, and how you put that together. So let's go ahead and I gently place this like socket onto the ball there. It's not snapped on yet. And then I gently kind of fit the horn onto the servo. There we go. So that should be in the right place. And then we press that down. So now the horn is on the servo. And then if we had the servo screw, which I don't think I have the screws with me here. I don't, I don't normally always screw in the jaw servo. Um, probably should. I just haven't found that it's been an issue and I also sometimes lose the screws. This guy, I will also say is, he is eight years old now, I believe, this animatronic. Um, so he's been through a lot and he's had a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of stuff happen to him. <laughs> Things go missing. So yes, once you have that put together, wait, is this correct? Hold up. Hold up, my folks. I might have this backwards. Ah! Yes, okay, I'm so sorry. I have this backwards. It's been a while, my friends. <laughs> All right. Um, so. Okay, we pop it on this way, not this way. Sorry, I was a little distracted. To reiterate, it goes on because you want it to pull back this way. So you want to line that up. Like this. Let me put the horn on here. Sometimes you gotta fiddle around with it a little bit, but that's all right. Okay, so now you press it down. It should be connected. Like I said, sorry I got that backwards earlier. Servo horn goes on this way. This thing go or this arm that we made that connects to the jaw goes in line with the jaw, and then we take this and we pop it on like that. Perfect. And it all snaps together. So now, and actually, instead of just turning it by hand to show you guys, I got my handy dandy servo tester, which you too can own for like six bucks. Yeah, I think they're pretty cheap too, which is really great. Um, love me some cheap electronics. Plug it into our power supply, and then we plug it in, whoops, don't roll away. Plug it into, I'm just going to plug it in one of these random ones. Let's do this one again. And then, you can see as I turn the knob, it's opening the jaw. Pretty neat, right? So there you have it. Oops. And also be careful that if you are working with a servo tester or any programming that you're doing, um, sometimes the mechanical limits of where you install the servo mean that it can't go the full 180 degrees, but it doesn't know that. So if I were to take this knob and turn, oops, sorry, let me put this back on camera. If I were to take this knob that's controlling it, you know, I can turn it this way, which is fine because it's opening the jaw, but if I were to take it and turn it the other way, it would try to force the jaw more closed than it can go, uh, which will burn out and break your servo. So don't do that. Uh, which is one of the reasons why we wanted to center it before we attach the horn is because we know, okay, when it's straight up and down, it should be closed, which means I can only go in the open direction, which in this case is, I believe, the positive numbers, like going higher. Um, you may need to fiddle around a bit to test out and figure out just what the limits of your servos are. Um, it'll be different for every single like application. Everywhere you put a servo, it will change. Even it might change across skeletons, uh, because all of these are handmade. Uh, there's no, like, of course, we do take measurements. We try to be as consistent as possible. But every now and then, you might just have one skeleton where either the plastic is a little different, like it's a little warped, 
or just the parts were placed a little differently uh, and you might need different settings for each of the servos for their limits. I like to keep a sheet uh, that has all of the limits recorded for each of my skeletons. This is also why I label my skeletons. If you can see here, that's actually the letter C that I wrote on the skull here to indicate that this is skeleton C. Uh, and that way I know in my programming, I know in my like limits sheet, all the settings that I've written down are for specifically this physical skeleton and all his parts. So yeah, that is our working jaw. Let me actually put it on the side so you can see that beautiful motion. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to figure out is how far open you can get your jaw. So let's put him off the side there. Okay, so let's see. So he can go about that, yeah. Also, you'll know when you've hit the limit of the servo, uh, if you turn it a little too far and you start hearing what we call a servo chatter. Uh, and it's just, let me see if actually I can get that on the microphone. You hear that? You don't want to have that. It means the servo is straining to go to that position. Uh, you don't want to do that. You want your servos to not complain and to be having a good time. So find out very gently how far open you can have your jaw. Um, right now, of course, I don't have any numbers for it to tell me, oh, this is like any feedback to say, oh, this is, you know, this far open, you know, this is the number. You just kind of have to eyeball it if you're using a servo tester. If you are using like a program like TrackSkull, you will have the number, so it will be nice to be like, okay, if I move the joystick, I know it's like about this, you know, far down. Um, so yeah, find your limits. But yeah, that's our jaw, working and beautiful. Um, you can also see how fast you can get it. Again, like I said, I don't like to run the jaws like super duper fast because when you talk, there's a lot of syllables, your jaw opens a lot. And if you plan on running these for a couple hours during the night, uh, that can really heat up your servos and burn them out and you don't want to break anything. But also these servos, the HS65 HPs, they're pretty robust. Um, these I found last a lot longer. The HS55s did not last very long at all for me, but that also could be because I was also running them a lot. Like, I was not being as nice to my servos. Alrighty. Let me check the chat questions real quick. Do you have any recommendations for building animatronics learning on budget? Whoops. Yes. Uh, I do. I have been building animatronics on a budget for a long time because a lot of this is all out of my pocket, except for now with the Patreon, I can build a little bit nicer things, especially more setup so I can show you guys actually also cheaper things. Um, cause I'm a fan of not spending way too much money cause I don't have a whole lot of it. But anyway, um, yes. I believe that you can also get really high quality animatronics using cheaper materials if you are, if you make the right decisions. Uh, and actually a lot of those decisions come down to the programming. Um, it can really change the overall effect of your animatronic if you have, as long as you have smooth motion that makes sense. Um, and this can be things like, let me, let me bring this back. And by motions that make sense, I mean you aren't just like, you know, having the jaw move randomly. Uh, so like not using the, like, auto talker things that just listen for the audio and automatically move the jaw. Um, if you take the time to go in and hand program it, uh, if you make the motions deliberate, if you make it very smooth, um, if you do all these things, or if you make the decisions to... Um, I'm trying to think of other ways in which you can just like decisions that you can make to really improve the quality of an animatronic without spending more money. Because um, again, also, these servos aren't like terribly, terribly expensive. Uh, the servos that we'll be using, this one, the pirates were fine before using the HS55s. It was grindy a little bit. It was, they burn out a little more often. Uh, but they were half the price. I know you can probably find something in between that price. These, I believe, are like 20 bucks maybe. Um, 
The servos on the back of the skeleton are $16. I know, of course, you can buy a lot more nicer servos for more money, uh, but those seem to work perfectly. You can also buy cheaper servos, see how those work as well. I have will say I have never, ever burnt out a back shoulder servo on these skeletons, and they are eight years old now. And I use them a lot throughout the year for uh, videos. I use them, I run them all night in Halloween. I have beaten these skeletons to pieces <laughs> in storage, in travel, just like testing things out with them. HS55 BBs, I love them. Doesn't mean that they can't burn out, because uh, I've burned them out in other projects, just not on these skeletons. Um, anything else? Any other advice I have real quick on how to keep things budget friendly? Um, you can also try hand making things out of like cheaper materials. Um, which honestly sometimes works better because cheaper materials tend to be lighter in weight. Uh, so for example, Corvus, his whole inner mechanism uh, was completely made out of popsicle sticks that were taped together with masking tape and like chunks of styrofoam that are shoved in there to make some stuff. Uh, and then I just used the same $16 servos and then the face was paper that I like taped together into the shape of the skull. So yeah, I don't know if that's, I hope that's helpful. <laughs> I was just rambling on for real quick. Let's just be Ah, Could even do some quick and dirty manual puppeteering with the servo controller. Yeah, you can do that if you have like people and you're like, oh my gosh, here's an animatronic that's sitting in my house because all of you people are now gonna have an animatronic that's just sitting in your house all year long, right? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you can just grab one of these and just um, plug it in, plug in your animatronic and be like, oh, or you can like, well, don't give it to your guests necessarily because then they might break it because they can go past the limits. Uh, that's one of the nice things about using the programs is that you can set the limits and say, hey, I can go crazy on this joystick and I can't break this animatronic. But these, you do have to be careful because you can go too far and break a servo. Uh, but yeah, they're fun. Play around with them. And they're super duper useful. All right, sorry, let me turn off my phone. I like forgot that this was over here and I was getting those notifications and I've just been ignoring it, but that's all right, because I'm streaming. Um, cool beans, everyone. We've got our jaw working. That is like half the skeleton. Wow. <laughs> 3D printing skulls, that would be awesome, yes. Great deal of potential. Wow, where did my, uh, there it went. Hope this is all going well for everyone. I don't know how many people have the parts yet or have tried putting together their skeleton yet. I don't know if anyone's trying to follow along. I know I'm going kind of quickly. If you are doing this in real time, uh, you probably won't be able to follow along in real time. But of course, you can always come back and watch the recording later. Yes, using Halloween props is another great, okay, thank you, David. Using Halloween props is really smart. Other YouTube channels would flex on us with a 3D printed prop or making a skull. Yes, that's another way to make things cheap, uh, is using what you can already get. Uh, I know these skeletons can be really expensive. Um, I think they've gone down in price over the years. Actually, when I first bought these guys, like eight years ago, I got them at a Michael's and they were $90 on the shelf, uh, but of course, it, Michael's, for those of you who are not in the United States, I don't know where Michael's are, if they're out of the United States as well. Uh, Michael's offers, there's like an arts and crafts store. Used to have a really good Halloween section, now it's been a little toned down. Um, but they usually give you 50% off coupons like all the time for just like any item. So I would go in every day and I would get another skeleton with my 50% off coupon. So I only spent, you know, 45 bucks. So being thrifty too, that's great. Um, but yeah, if you can find props that have like, oh, you know, it has like this kind of joint in it. I will say the Home Depot skeletons, the ones that they sell off the like just plain skeletons that aren't, don't have any animatronic parts to them, um, they have, they're actually the same skeletons that they use for their animatronics. Uh, so you can remove, like the skull comes apart like this way. There's a seam down the middle and you just open it this way and it already has like the little jaw like I believe it already has like the jaw mechanism inside it and those skeletons can be like really cheap i think they're like sometimes 20 30 per skeleton uh but they don't have the 
the neck swivel but if you do want to install your own it's kind of like what you want to do if you want to install your own swivel joint but then have an easier time with the jaw or if you want to have an easier time with the neck and maybe do a little more for the jaw I don't know um, those are also a cheaper option as well all right real questions real quick before we move on to the shoulders I also, I want to try, um, I want to see, I might do this on, I've been looking at doing this on the channel. I want to buy a store-bought animatronic and, like, reprogram it and, like, add stuff to it. I think that'd be a really fun, like, project for people. Also for people who want to get their feet kind of wet with animatronics but don't want to, like, fully build something by hand. Um, to see about, you know, reprogramming a store-bought animatronic. Um, I know you just have to, like, it can be a little tricky sometimes because you don't always know, like, oh, you have to, like, figure it out as you're going. You have to open it up and say, okay, what kind of motor is this? And, like, how am I going to, like, power this and all that? Um, so, yeah, that might be a little bit more technical. Who knows? I'll figure it out. Character creation. Give your animatronic more personality. Uh, one of the ways you can do that, I think... Again, it also really comes down to if you want them to be more lifelike and be more like interesting and less like a robot, it comes really down to how you program them, and that comes with the like jaw motion lining up really well with the sound, getting that like precise control and making sure like oh you know he's like oh he's like loud and he's like talking more like this or like oh he's like whispering so he's like doing really quietly, um, or like when he like moves his head it makes sense it's like oh haha ha, he's laughing or like oh something like that. Um, the movements aren't jerky, if you can get those smooth and clean. Um, the voices are also, I think, a really big part of it. I haven't really done much with, like, custom audio. I normally just borrow audio from other places. Um, but yeah. Also, another tip for character creation or giving them more personality. I like having... Here's another fun little quick rant before we go to this. I like having animatronics be able to interact with each other. Uh, I think that's really cool. Um, so the ability, and I unfortunately can't do that with these guys, with the way they're built. They can only, uh, like, tilt their head this way. But I'd love to, and I haven't done a Triaxa skull, like, on a skeleton yet, just because I haven't, I did it on a pumpkin. Um, and those are a little bit more complicated to make, so I'm not doing the tutorial for that anytime soon. Um, but I'd love to be able to have them turn so I can look at each other and, like, address each other. Uh, I just think that, like, makes it, like, make a little bit more realism. It's like in a video game, if you have a bunch of NPCs and they're all walking around and you can talk to them, and it's like, oh, look at these like, NPCs, but they're more robotic because they're not, like, interacting with each other. I feel like that kind of, like, interaction with each other is what also really, like, helps create the illusion of life and all that. Um, so yeah. Alright, those were tips from Cat, from things that I have noticed over the, all the years of skeletons. <laughs> AliExpress, yes, I do use those sometimes. Their quality is a little questionable. Yes, the newer skeletons at Home Depot do not have the ball neck. Yes, they do not. Um, but they do have that interesting feature where you can split the head open and get to the jaw mechanism. Also, if you can split the head open, that does allow you the area in reasonable ability to add moving eyes, which would also be really cool in the skeletons. Uh, talk about software, explain how to program in Python. I will talk about the programming in the next stream. I'm not really going to cover that today. If anyone wants to know more about the programming, uh, you can watch. I made those pre-made tutorials a long time ago, the How to Animatronic series. Um, I went over the programming in the second video of that. Actually, I should link those in the description. I haven't done that yet. I will link the description to those tutorials right after this. Um, right after I end the stream and this is posted. All right, let's move on to the back. The back is going to be the second half of the skeleton. So we're kind of halfway done, basically, with the skeleton itself. Let me move this up a bit see all the things I have here. So, things. so this right here, let me keep fixing my camera. I also want to give you guys a tip. Speaking of skeletons and quality, I'll give you guys something, a tip that has really saved me over the years. Also, sorry if you can hear rumbling on the table when I move this stuff around. 
Um, I know the mic is right here. I don't really have a better place to put the mic. Let's see if I can move this up a little bit. All right. Um, so while I'm fixing this, hopefully you can hear me well. Okay, that is positioned. Positioned well. Okay. Losing my mind. <laughs> ah. Friends, family, viewers. It has been a wild day. I found out, I know some of you have heard this already. I found out I didn't have tape in my apartment and I needed to tape some like diffusing sheets, like paper towels on my lamp so it wasn't so harsh. I didn't have tape to tape it to the thing, but I did have some pears that I got from the grocery store. So I'm using pear stickers because we're resourceful here at Cat's Menagerie. <laughs> um, all right. The body of the skeleton. These skeletons are hollow plastic in their spine. Uh, and again, I have had these skeletons for, I believe, eight years now. Um, and there have been several things that have broken on them throughout the years sometimes. Uh, sometimes I will have the hands come off because they're only connected. I don't know if you can see it really well. I kind of want to change the camera again. They're connected. They have this really, really tiny joint here. Um, and that joint likes to snap sometimes. This guy's missing an arm, not because it fell off, but, <laughs> but because I cut it off. Because uh, I used it to test the moving arm for Castle Park when I did the skeletons. Um, when the hands, I like to uh, reinforce them with, like, I can't remember what I did for Castle Park. I think I used a little bit of, like, hot glue. I, may I use fishing line? I don't remember. Um, I think I used hot glue and I did some, like, I if I use popsicle stick or something to do little like splints on the outside. Uh, anything you can add to that to just reinforce that little tiny like rod there. Because that is what, there's like a, a nail, or not nail, sorry. There's a little bolt thing that goes in between, sorry that won't focus as well, that goes in between, there's like a little ball on the end that connects it. And this little rod is the only thing holding up this big hand. So anything you can add to just strengthen that. I haven't found like a super good way of doing that yet, but I'm sure everyone here is very clever. Uh, I'm sure some people can find some very good ways to do that. But the thing I wanted to tell you guys about that will save you over the years. One of the first things to break on my skeletons has always been the spine here. Uh, sometimes you'll see me in videos, I have like half of a skeleton because that's, they come in half <laughs> over the years, especially as you're putting them, if you put them in storage in the off season, uh, if your storage unit gets hot, um, if you're constantly, you know, folding them up like this and then like unfolding them and messing around with them a lot as they're getting transported, as they're getting dismantled, reassembled, this gets very weak over time. Plastic dry rots, gets hot, it breaks. Uh, so there's actually a very easy way to prevent that from happening. Uh, and again, this is preventative and not a way to fix it afterwards, uh, but you can't usually fix it afterwards. It's usually just this little, it's the same connector here in the spine as the head, basically. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's like the same thing here, but larger. And usually what breaks is that that knob just like splits off down here. So what I like to do is I actually, we can do this right now on the stream. I will remove these screws. So there's three screws here. I'm gonna show you what I mean, because this is actually a very important step. I recommend that everyone does it. There are three screws here. I'm gonna unscrew this one in the middle. Yes, uh, someone said in the chat, none of my skeletons have the little pin in the wrist. I've broken all their hands. Yes, I've ordered skeletons like this before and I've had them arrive with the hands broken off. So that's something that likes to happen on these skeletons. Here's another clever thing. Uh, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta be, you gotta think of these things when things break on Halloween day. Uh, one of the skeletons, uh, this, the blue skeleton, as I call him, um, cause he wears a blue coat and he's also blue in the script. His hand broke off Halloween day. Uh, and he's sitting on a treasure chest 
and he's like looking at treasure. Uh, so what we did is we put, we had this like really fancy vase that's like opaque, you can't see through it. Uh, we put the vase in his lap and we put his like arm in the vase, like he's like digging through the vase. Uh, but of course he doesn't have a hand, so that was a way to be like, oh, you wouldn't know. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was, you do what you gotta do and you make do with it. Okay, so what we've done is I've just removed that one screw. Let me turn this so you can see it. I've removed this one screw from the middle of the spine there where it connects. Don't remove these screws. There's two on either side, leave those in. And right now what we're doing, this has nothing to do with the actual animatronic movement or anything. This is just important to make sure your spine does not break over the years because we want skeletons to last. And if you do treat these right, they should last a long, long time. <laughs> All right, so the second step I'm doing, I'm just removing, so there's two screws you're gonna to need to remove. There's that one in the back, and there's also one in the middle here. Sorry if you can't see that very well. Let me bring, oops, there's a knee, a knee in the way. There's a screw right there in the middle that you'll have to remove as well. Let me take this off. All right. So once you have done that, you can gently pop the skeleton off of that like uh, joint in the middle. Actually, it might help you if you don't want to put any more strain on them. And fun fact, once you remove that, your skeleton can like twist back and forth. So see how, let me see if I can move this here. Let me just do it in this camera. Ta-da! We're moving over here now. Uh, once I've removed those two screws, you can like kind of rotate back and forth, which is cool. Um, I don't take advantage of that. I haven't done torso movements yet, but I would like to. Um, and actually, let me just use this camera. We might go ahead and remove these two screws as well, just so we're not putting any more strain on that back as we try to pop it off. So I'm going to go ahead and take those off. And I'm actually not going to unscrew them all the way. I'm just going to screw them a little bit just so there's a little bit of slack. And what these two screws do is they hold these, the like back side of the spine and the front side of the spine together on the top. All right. Okay, so I have now taken this top part off. These screws are still kind of in place because what happens is there's like a knob, but on mine, I've actually, whoops, he's caught on my strings there. I've actually cut a hole out of the top of this. So let me put this in my little close-up camera. There, you can see it. This used to be a solid knob that the top of the skeleton like squashed down onto. Squashed is the technical term. <laughs> I don't know. He pops down onto it. Um, I cut a hole in that. And then I just take a PVC pipe. This is, what kind is this? I don't know how thick this is. I believe this is half inch PVC. Um, and this is like, how long is this? It's not super long. You just want to like line it up with the back of your skeleton. So if your skeleton is all put together, let me bring him back in the camera. If your skeleton is all put together, take it, line it up with the spine so that it goes about to the base and about to the top. I will give you the exact measurements in two seconds. Let me pull out my handy dandy ruler. All right, let's look at this under the camera. Whoops, there's the camera. It is, let me put that there. It's about 17 inches. Um, about 17 inches long. Again, it doesn't have to be super precise. Um, this is half inch diameter. Uh, and what you do, like I said, you cut a hole not too far down. You want to still have that, like, sorry, it won't focus again. Webcams, am I right? <laughs> uh, you still want it to have that lip so it can, like, pop down onto it. But cut a hole just enough so that you can slide the PVC down into it. And because it's hollow, it just fits right in. And then we're going to take the top half of our skeleton and we're just going to slide that on top. 
and it should snap back down onto that thing, onto that knob. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these two screws that we loosened on either side. Um, and again, we loosened those just to make it a little easier to pop that off. These don't actually hold it on. These, since the skeleton's created by, uh, like there's a seam down the middle of this rib cage spine, this is one half and then the inside is another half. This just screws those halves together. Um, but now in order to connect it back, we're just going to make sure we line it back up with the screw holes. And then we're going to screw this back in on the back. And this will hold it in place to prevent it from rotating and also give it more strength. I believe also, now that I'm thinking about it, I think you need to, yes, okay. When you put that PVC in there, you're gonna wanna drill back through it to get your holes in place. So that, because now you have the PVC in there, uh, you probably won't be able to just screw this back on like I'm doing here. <laughs> uh, because you're gonna need a place for those screws to like go into. I believe that's how I did this. Sorry, also, it's been a while. I was not expecting to talk about this today on the stream. I was thinking about just going with the animatronic parts, uh, but I don't want to skip this because I do think it's something that could help a lot of people uh, in the future. Just, you know, make sure you don't do anything that's going to, you know, make sure that your animatronic has the best, best shot at lasting a long time. Again, like I said, I'm going to check this real quick. I don't think I can screw these actually back in the middle without drilling. Let's see where the hole is. Yes. Okay. So there's the hole. I'm just going to line it back up. So yes, you can see there actually, I forgot to talk about. Where did I go? Huh. Maybe I'm incorrect. I don't remember, folks. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's all right. You get the idea. Again, like I said, this stream, a lot of it is not what I wanted it to be. I wanted to be able to go over this in more detail and do it live, uh, but that's just not a thing that's going to be able to happen anymore. But that's okay. I hope we're all still learning enough. And of course, if anyone has any more questions, feel free to them in the chat. I'm trying to keep up with the chat best I can. I know that I'm getting a lot of questions. Um, also, if your question does get answered or if you come across any more questions as you're working this throughout the season, uh, sometimes I don't always get back to comments. Uh, sorry about that. Sometimes YouTube, I just don't get the notifications. Um, but you can always email me. I do try to get back to emails. I'm not always able to get to all of them because uh, I get a lot of emails this time of year, like a lot. Um, but I will try my best. You can also always comment because sometimes other people can answer. Uh, and I really appreciate it if you are answering other people's questions. If you've got your own solutions, that's great. I also love hearing all sorts of, you know, new ideas and things. It's a great, great way to... Yeah, okay, this isn't going to screw back in, but that's okay. Let me fix this. While I'm screwing this in, let me read the comments. That's a good point, Masato. Okay, if you want to get it fancy, you can mix one person talking to the right speaker and one to the left and put uh, the respective speaker next to its corresponding character. That is a fantastic idea. I love that. That is something that you can do with... Uh, like left and right channels if anyone has done like audio their own audio and garage band that's another thing i kind of wanted to talk about i might i did a little bit talk about it on the patreon um was how to like make your own audio in garage band um like let's say you had like a song and you want to add like sound effects or you want to like chop up what a character's saying uh doing that in something like or not just garage band because i know not everyone's a mac user in fact probably shouldn't be a Mac user here because it's all the software is on Windows, but that's okay. You can still use Mac and just use a virtual machine. Uh, but Audacity is another thing that works well for that. If you're on Windows, Audacity is free. So yeah, that is audio. Let me check questions real quick. I know I keep saying GarageBand. Sorry, I keep saying GarageBand. If I say GarageBand, think also Audacity. I'm just used to using GarageBand sometimes to do my audio because it's I feel like a little bit easier to use maybe. Um, uh, uh, tracks related. Oh, yes. Uh, which, which version of VSA? I will say real quick. Um, I think hobbyist is fine for this. 
the only reason, so I got the professional version back in the day, and I don't remember, I think it's because I was planning on doing a projection effect with the skeletons, um, and the professional version, I believe, allows you to do one video track as well. I'm not sure the hobbyist allows video tracks. Um, so yeah, that's basically, if you really, really kind of boil it down to the point where we're going to be working on this, um, what the main difference is. So yes, hobbyists should be fine. Also, audio files. Yeah. I don't know. Depends on how many you want of those. I've only ever used one audio file. Um, I just like put everything in one. But yeah, it might be convenient to have. I know the hobbyist, like you said, has two, which I'm not sure it's a scenario in which you might need three or more. But And if you do need more, like, audio on your show, you can also always make your own through Audacity or GarageBand. Uh, <laughs> My favorite is when they show up with two right hands or two left feet. That's a good one. I have not seen that yet. And I've been through a lot of skeletons. <laughs> Gotta get the good uncommon or the rare that's that's a uh what are they called in pokemon it's a shiny skeleton <laughs> it's like the pokemon <laughs> uh i've been on the fence about getting pro because i want to incorporate video yeah i don't know i haven't used that feature yet i will say um maybe someday i haven't done that yet also another thing i know that unscrewing i want to say real quick these two uh screws right here that hold the rib cage together. Uh, you can't really see it on the camera. I don't think you'll be able to see it. So I'm just going to talk about it. Um, they poke through the front and when they ship it to you, they put, at least mine, I don't know if they do this anymore, they put a dab of hot glue on the end and that prevents it from being sharp. Um, and this is, of course, true of all your projects if you're screwing in sharp screws and they stick through. I did this on Salacious because that happened a lot. Um, he had little teeth in his mouth where I screwed something in. He would bite me sometimes, and I was like, ooh. <laughs> so you can always add your own little dab of hot glue on the end of the screw if it sticks through. That way you just won't be poking yourself. Uh, it'll be nice when it's dark and it's Halloween night, and you're like trying to put it together, and you're like, ah, why am I bleeding? <laughs> so yes. Uh, I have some questions real quick. Make sure you have a little Tupperware to keep your screws in, yes. Screws, especially tiny screws, do not lose your skeleton screws. Um, it's That would just be inconvenient. <laughs> uh, you can always use... I should, um, I should find out what these screws are. I should have a list of skeleton screws. I haven't done that. Um, but yes, that is very good to always keep track of your screws, especially servo screws. Servo screws can be expensive, um, and I don't... Let me go, let me go find them right now. I have a little, a little bag of them right here. You. Also, sorry if I walk away and I realize my audio is like, oh, they probably can't hear me if I like walk away from the camera and I'm still talking. Mm -hmm. So real quick, I was just going to say on the topic of losing your screws, um, losing your screws equals losing your mind. So don't do it. This, I don't know if you can see that, is a servo screw. That's a servo screw for a standard servo. Uh, so it's larger as, like, the shoulder servos. Uh, they're very tiny, as you can see. And they get lost really easily. Huh? Good? Okay. They get lost really easily. Don't lose them, because they're very expensive. Okay. Um, sorry, I got distracted. Don't lose them. If you do lose them, you can always order more on Servo City or other servo suppliers. Uh, they, they're expensive and easy to lose. I don't like things that are expensive and easy to lose for obvious reasons, but magnetic screwdrivers, good. Magnetic, they make little magnetic bowls that you can also put your screws in as you're working. Those are also very great. You won't drop them and lose them as much. <laughs> so yes. Um, let me continue real quick. Link through the servo tester. Yes, absolutely. I will add that in the description. Let me write that down. So I remember it. Add link to servo tester. That's not my handwriting normally. <laughs> oh, you can't see it. Perfect. I wrote it down with like my end of the pencil. Literally. Yes. If there's anything else anyone wants links to or wants to know which kind I use, uh, just let me know and I can always throw in the links for that. Bot fishing tackle box to hold servo stuff. Yes, that is also great. It's 
it's great to be organized. You will not lose things. You will not have a nightmare of a time. I can show you guys real quick what I like to keep my servos in. This is on top of it. This is the last thing. I'll show you what I keep my servos in. We'll talk about that real quick. And then we'll get to moving on that. Wait, wait, this is it. Alright, folks. I'm glad you brought that up. So, real quick, also, if you use a lot of servos, I like this box. I've decorated it because I like decorating things. Every time I buy a servo, not every time, because sometimes they don't come in pretty wrappers like this, I like to cut off the wrapper and stick it on the front. Like the box. Sorry, not the wrapper. I cut up the box and I stick it on the front because I think it looks cool. And also, this, I can't remember what this is called, if anyone wants to see this. Uh, this is how I organize all the servos that I use in all my products. It's like a jewelry box, uh, and it's two-sided, because there's like two of them fit together. This side has all of my servos in it. I also, every time I get the box with this, like, specifications, I cut that out and I tape it up here. And that way I can see, oh, these are the servos that I have in here right now. If I need to know, like, the torque, or how much... Do these have amps on it? These don't have current draws, I don't think. Um, but any sort of specifications, I can just check really easily in the top of the box. Servos. I also do keep my burnt out servos. Uh, so if you do break a servo, don't always be quick to throw it away. I like to write on the side with like a silver sharpie, like broken or something. Uh, because those can be useful as placeholder servos if you need to like cut out or install it somewhere and you need to like mark something or anywhere where you're like kind of building and you're like this is kind of dangerous for the servo like it gets banged up a little bit I don't want to damage like a perfectly working servo uh, but I just need to have like a placeholder in there that I can like work with broken servos are great for that if you have those um, so yeah but I will say a lot of servos if you buy them off of Amazon because I've bought a lot of Amazon servos don't come in pretty packaging and it makes me sad <laughs> but if you flip it over another nice thing on the other side I have a bunch of junk Ignore the junk. Let me take the junk. Ah, get out of here. Okay. If we flip it over on the other side, this is where I keep all the servo horns. Um, and each of these I put, I usually cut off the label of the servo and I have like, oh, this is the HS55 HBs. Also write it on the bag. It's good to have on the bag so you know which servo it goes to. I have a lot of these horns. Um, each of these is for like a different servo. These are all just bags of horns and screws for all the different kinds of servos. So yes, I love this kind of organization. I don't remember where I got, I got this from Michael's. I can also put a link to this if anyone wants this. I can do a little research. But yes, this is a what I think is a nice way of organizing all your servo stuff. Also, I don't know if like how many servos people will be working with eventually. Because um, this project only takes three. But maybe next year... We'll do an arm, maybe. That'll be more servos. I know that people might be interested in that. Uh, I recently made an arm for one of my skeletons, which is why this guy is missing an arm. Uh, so I can talk a little bit about that as well later. Let me check the chat. I got the box from, I believe, it was either Target or Michael's. All right, okay, on to the second half of the skeleton, and we're gonna wrap it up, it's gonna be great. We're already doing so well. I'm glad that also, because it's something else I wanna talk about, and I'm glad I'm getting the chance to as well in this stream, was a little bit more than just, here's how you drill the holes, here's how you put on the brackets and everything. I wanted to talk also a little bit about just like, general, you know, here's how you can make your skeleton more robust, here's how you can store your servers. I'm glad that we get a chance to like, say those things because I think they're important and they can save you a lot of time in the future and a lot of headache so glad that we can talk about that kind of stuff so first things first with the um uh with the back of the skeleton I want to talk about the brackets 
Now, I, I posted the measurements for the brackets. Let me pull them over here. Uh, a link to that in the description of this video. Uh, that should be public. It's on the Patreon just because Patreon is like a really convenient way for me to like get files out to people. Uh, Cause I don't know how else I would be like, here's a file, like a picture to download. I don't know how else I'd do that. Um, so it should be public on the Patreon. Let me know if anyone can't access it. And that has the measurements for for this bracket here. Let me zoom in on this. And by zoom in, I mean bring the camera closer. <laughs> zoom in the old fashioned way. All right, here is the metal bracket that I use to connect the um, servos that will move the head onto the back of the skeleton. So as you can see in this view, it just goes on right here. Now, let me talk about this real quick. This is made up of two like thin strips of steel that I cut. I did a little, let me see if I have the images. The last time I made this, I took a bunch of uh, pictures as I was working. Let me see if I have that right here. I might not, I don't remember if it's on this computer. Um, doo -doo -doo. I am not sure that I have that, but I can talk about it real quick. I do not have that, that's okay. We can just talk about it. You guys are smart. Also, it's not that complicated. So, let me grab another piece of paper real quick and we can draw this out. I'm very much like also, ah. <laughs> let me be right back. I feel like I'm very much, I don't know if I'm a visual learner, but I'm very much a visual explainer. I love to have my like diagrams and all of my like, here's how you do it, like watching things. Cause I feel like, again, with this kind of thing, stuff gets really complicated. So it like gets to be really confusing and it helps just to sit down and say, okay, I know I can describe it in this way, but it's not gonna make any sense until I draw it out. So let me pull up those measurements real quick that I took and we can talk about how to, and I know that a lot of people maybe can figure this out, but I just want to go over it real quick. Uh, photo set. Let me switch to, uh, display. There we go. Okay. So here are the measurements for that bracket. And there's two pieces. I'm gonna draw out. So the top one, of course, is the top one that goes on the skeleton. And this is the bottom one. The servos go in between them right here. These two dots show where, like, you basically drill the holes uh, for the servos. And let me, let me pull back up my... Let me pull back up my uh, thing over here. Yes, okay. Um, so if that's a little confusing, basically the two dots, what I mean by that, I drilled a bunch of dots in here originally. This is the first bracket I ever made. Um, so I wasn't sure where I wanted to put the servos. Uh, but in our measurements, I have over the years figured out that, so let me switch screens, that if you bring in the uh, servos, if you take your servo, you have your two brackets that you've cut. Um, and basically how I did that real quick is I took tin snips, which are those like big, big metal shears, uh, and you cut off, um, your strips, you know, the two different lengths. The top one's a little bit longer than this one. Uh, but I believe when you flatten them out, I think they're the same length when you flatten them out. I'm not sure I haven't done that math yet. Um, so basically you cut out two flat strips like this. This is of course not to scale. Uh, and each of them is gonna have measurements. And let me see, I forgot to add how wide they were. Let me add this measurement right here. I believe they're half an inch, how high are they? Yeah. They're about 10 millimeters wide. Yes, I did them in millimeters, the measurements. Hopefully that's not confusing people. It just 
worked out a little cleaner. So this is, that's, yes. <laughs> 10, that's backwards. I'm writing backwards. I'm writing upside down and backwards. Um, 10. <laughs> Everyone knows that. That is ugly, but that's all right. Uh, so yeah, 10 millimeters or half an inch, it's not quite the same. It's not really, really important how wide they are as long as they're, oops, let me move this down this way. Why is there, oh, it's because the sun is setting. The sun is setting and it's making it lines. <laughs> You've been streaming for a little while. Ah, let me put the, there we go. Let's make a shadow here. Okay, perfect. Um, so your bracket here, yeah, if you want to close the blinds, thanks. Uh, all right, so the bracket here. You cut your two lines and then you do your little markings of like uh, your measurements. Let me, sorry, I, uh, there we go. Perfect, okay, now I can see. Sorry, folks, I am looking at so many things right now. I'm like the screens and the measurements and the paper and the everything. I'm writing upside down, having a good time. All right, uh, so, of course, it'll be flat. You cut out these strips out of the uh, metal with tin snips. And the metal is not too expensive. So this is another thing about the brackets that I like, the homemade brackets. I think the metal is like $6 for a sheet. It's a huge sheet. You will have a lot of extra. Uh, and then the tin snips can be a little expensive. I believe they're $16 maybe for a pair. Um, but you can make all sorts of things with them. I used the exact same steel sheet and tin snips to make every bracket for the arm. Uh, so for the skeleton arm, the only thing I used was that steel, the actual skeleton arm itself, and the servos. And some screws. And that's it. Easy peasy. I mean, not really easy, but simple in materials. Um, so yeah, you mark out these. I used an anvil, uh, or sorry, not anvil, a vise. It had an anvil on it. A vise to bend this. Um, so what I did is I took that sheet of like metal, you stick it into the end of your vise, you bend it over, you know, in the vise it'll stay bent, it won't do this. Sorry, I don't have a way, better way of like visually describing this. I wish I still had my videos, but it's hard, I'm in an apartment, I don't have a vise with me. <laughs> um, but you get the idea. You stick it into your vise, you like bend it over, and then you can like hammer it down in the vise, and that will give you a nice like angled thing. And then you, I do it in a staple shape first. So the first thing I bend down are these sections here. And then you'll be at the step where you have like, whoops, moving this around, moving this around. So then you'll be left with these shapes here. And of course you have your little vise like here you put your little strip of metal in there, you bend it over, and then you hammer it down. So that's what you end up with. That's my, here's my little hammer. Sorry if this is confusing. You hammer that down, and that's how you get your staple shape. And then you do the exact same thing. You stick this into your vise. Here's your little vise here. And you bend this whole thing this way, and then you'll get this shape. And then you do the same thing on the other side, and then you'll end up with your, this thing. Um, so basically it's a lot of like bending and folding. There's all these different ways you can do this, um, as long as you end up with your shape that's like this. And then once you have that done, uh, going back to this measurements thing here, where I have those two red dots where it says 40 millimeters and 35 millimeters, uh, what I do for that is I take my ruler, once I've cut out my bracket, I take the servos themselves, and again, if you have burnt out servos that you're like, oh, this can be messed around with in a garage, uh, and I don't worry about messing it up. Um, ooh, this, yeah, it's getting really hot here. Perfect. Uh, I put the servos themselves onto the bracket, I measure it to be 40 or so millimeters in. 
from this side. There we go. And mine are a little off just because these again are the, this is the first bracket that I made. There we go. First bracket that I made so I didn't have like, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, so the, ah, my light. So the things have changed over the years, especially as I've done more and more skeletons. Um, this light's not wanting to stay. Ah. Sorry folks, technical difficulties. Anyway, uh, so the nice thing is you place your servos in, you mark where the holes are, you measure, you make sure they are consistent, that they all fit, you know, 40 millimeters in on this side. And then this one, they are 35 millimeters in. Cause again, these two pieces are not the same. Uh, here, thunder or something. These two pieces are not the same because the scapula, the shoulder blades in which they attach to are curved. Uh, so if you make them the same length, it's not going to fit on the back of the skeleton. This piece is shorter, but it's also slightly taller and that will fit. So hopefully that is, sorry if this was a little confusing explanation. I wasn't sure how to describe how to make it. Um, again, I wish I could show, but again, I don't have a vise or tin snips or steel in my apartment. So we'll do our best. If anyone's got any questions, of course, leave them in the chat or send me an email. Um, let me see, let me see questions, questions, questions in the chat. And then we'll go on to talk about installing the servos. Uh, da, da, da. As far as actuation, when is it good to use a servo versus using a pneumatic? That's a good question. Um, so pneumatics will give you, they're a lot stronger so they can lift larger things. Uh, so if you want to use like full body motion, um, perhaps you could go for pneumatics. They also make very strong servos. Um, but of course those go up in price. Um, but the problem of course with pneumatics is that they aren't like very like controllable so you won't get very like you know nice smooth precise movements out of them um they're usually just on or off uh so that is you know all the way or this way so if it's just a body twist you can only do this so it, it tends to be a little bit more like robotic um but servos of course again have their limits with strength they're not very strong um so yeah, it all just kind of depends on what you want to go. Pneumatics, I will say, I think, I believe are more expensive to use in the long run uh, because you need like an air compressor, which is large and expensive, also very loud. Um, the pneumatic parts themselves, I believe, aren't, they kind of come to around the same, maybe if not more price as a servo, because you'll need the pneumatic cylinder. You'll also need the solenoid valve to go with it, and that's what like turns on and off the air for it. Uh, you also need the tubing and all that. And I think in the end that price is a little bit more pricier than service. So I think in the end they are more expensive. Um, but yeah, it just kind of depends on if you need like larger, but less precise movement, or if you're looking to make like the course, like the jump scare animatronics, then you'll need pneumatics because those can also be very, very fast. Uh, I have not used pneumatics yet. Yes, yes, everyone pushing, pulling, heavy things, matter of weight, yes. Because uh, pneumatics, can, you can get a lot of, like, strength and force and thrust out of those for not a whole lot of money <laughs> compared to servos. Uh, you can get very strong servos. I believe the strongest servo that I've come across so far within a reasonable price range. Well, not re reasonable price range. Um, under $1,000. There's a servo made by, I believe it's high tech. Let me check my chart real quick. Handy dandy servo comparison chart. Um, and this is just a fun fact. I know no one here is going to buy this, <laughs> uh, but fun fact for those of you that are interested, um, the strongest servo that I've come across in my servo comparison sheet right now has, it's by a company called Pro Modeler. Um, it's one of their mega servos. So it's a lot like physically larger than a standard servo and it's, uh, torque is 160 kilograms per centimeter, which is a lot. The servo is also $400, so... <laughs> and for comparison, uh, the servos that I use on the shoulders here, those have a torque of... where is it? Four. Four. Four kilograms per centimeter compared to 160. So, 
there's your little comparison. You can also get stronger servos, um, uh, like digital servos, because these are analog. Uh, and I know I say that a lot, you know, digital servos versus analog servos. I talk about how a lot how digital servos draw more current, they draw more power. Um, because digital servos are usually a lot stronger than analog servos. Uh, you can buy, I've seen a lot on Amazon, there's like the Lewin Soul LD27MG um, or the LD20MGs. Those can lift 20 kilograms per centimeter, which is five times more like stronger than these. And those are about, I believe those are also $16 each maybe? Maybe they're 20 bucks. I don't remember. Um, but yeah. A lot more force, a lot more travel. Yes, that's another good point about pneumatics. A lot of travel. Uh, you can get pistons that go really far. With a servo, you know, you can make the horn longer, but then of course that changes the torque. Um, like how much, you know, it's harder to lift things farther out. Uh, but like, the horn is not going to move very much. But a pneumatic, you can get them to move. Like, you can have pistons that go like, you know, really far. So you can get lots of really large movements. Um, so thank you for that, Dr. Scott Diabolical Evil Genius, that's a good point. Mechanics of how you made Corvus. Uh, maybe not today, let me finish up the skeleton. Maybe we can have some- maybe we'll have some free time at the end for general animatronics questions things. Um, because I want to make sure I get through the skeleton, which is what people came for, uh, before they have to go. Because I said I think this would go for two hours. Um. Linear servos are between pneumatics and regular servos and can move 5 to 500 pounds. That is also a good point. They do make servos that are like linear actuators. Uh, I've found that those also tend to be extremely expensive, which is why I haven't used them yet. But lots of lots of options for motors and things. There's also DC motors, uh, which you can use in animatronics. And I recently used in the, if anyone saw on Instagram, uh, the Morgan animatronic, the like evil bandit dude that I did for the... Uh, roller coaster people, which you guys should also go check out. Magic Texture on YouTube, they did freaking cool roller coaster stuff. Um, that animatronic used DC motors to do his like torso movements, which can be tricky because uh, we had to use like a relay system to change uh, like it's polarity, where you like switch the ground and your like voltage and all that, or your positive voltage. Um, and that's how they switch direction. It's just a tricky mechanical setup sometimes, especially if you don't happen to have relays on you at the moment. Um, and then programming wise can be a little different too, because DC motors are either on or off. There is no like precise, you know, turn to this like point or whatever. Uh, anyway, let me continue on this for a little while. Let me bring back up my software so I can see what I'm doing because I can't see it when it's on YouTube because it goes really slowly and delayed. Alright, let me get rid of this. So, I was going to take these off and I totally was running out of time before we started, but you get the idea. You bend it, you make your brackets that are shaped like this. Once you have those, you measure in, where's my, where's my pencil? You measure in from the side on each one and you place your servo and then you mark the holes where you need to drill and then you just use a regular drill power drill your drill bits the metal ones for metal <laughs> um, I meant to say the ones that are for metal not the ones that are made out of metal because they're all made out of metal um, and you just drill the holes in and I like to use I try to stay consistent uh, when I make animatronics uh, with the screws that I use it's great if I can just use one screw for the entire project, and that way if I if screw comes loose, if I lose it, you know, I'll have a lot of extras and I don't have to check and be like, now which one was this one? Um, and the type of screw that these are is listed in that parts list, I believe. I can't remember. Um, I don't know if I have a bucket with me. Um, but yeah, you just choose your favorite screw. Also, you can do all four screws. <laughs> Uh, I recommend probably doing all four screws just because you want it to be nice and presentable. We're trying to make nice animatronics here. Um, but again, this guy over the years, I have been taking these on and off a lot. Um, I haven't had a problem with only two screws in each, like one in each corner. Um, again, this animatronic is kind of in, he's a little janky, he's a little in bad shape. 
Uh, he's really, really old and has been through, I have experimented all sorts of things on him and testing out stuff and I borrowed an arm, which I'm not bringing back for him, so he's been a little, he's a little scrappy, but that's okay. We still love him. So yeah, uh, once you have those marked and drilled, screw in your servos. Uh, another thing that you can do, let me pull up an image because this is one, there's, there's different ways that you can make this bracket. Let me pull up real quick another image of how you can make this bracket. Uh, and this is the bracket that I did for Castle Park. Let me pull up these images real quick. Uh, where is my, there we go, images here. Because what I did for Castle Park is I wanted it to be a little more polished. Of course, everything I wanted to be very polished because uh, it was for, it was a professional work job thing. <laughs> professional work job thing. I've been streaming for too long. My brain's a little done. Uh, anyway, let me pull up these images real quick. Here we go. That's a good image. So, uh, let's try this. Whoops. There we go. All right, I don't know if you guys can see that. Cool, looks like you can. Um, this that you're looking at here is an image of one of the brackets that was on the back of the skeletons that I made for Castle Park. And you can see that the only difference is I added this section here. Uh, and I will talk about that in two seconds. Let me pull it back here. I wish I could do both. I need to set up so I'm gonna do both camera and ah. Oops. There we go. Okay. So I know, like I've said earlier, Servo City has discontinued the sending and receiving boards. Get this out here. Has discontinued the sending and receiving boards that we use to make the skeletons and all the animatronics and everything. Um, I've got a lot of emails. I know. I'm very upset. Those are super useful. I'm sorry that I don't have a good alternative right now uh, for those. Also, this light is driving me insane. I don't have tape in my apartment. I know you guys have heard me say that before, but if you're new here, I was trying to tape stuff on the lights to make them not so bright and in my face, but I don't have tape, but I did have pears. So I borrowed some pear stickers, but now I'm gonna borrow this sticker sheet sticker. Perfect. Wow, that's much better. Okay, now I can actually see. Hello. Servo City is not making those sending and receiving boards anymore. No, I do not have a good alternative. I'm sorry. Uh, I really, I'm looking for one. I'm seeing uh, what's out there. Hopefully, because there's such a demand for them, that some other vendor will step in and start making their own version. Um, that would be amazing. I know that there, like I said, is a big demand for them. Um, I'm not sure why Service City has stopped. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why. Um, but you can still use long servo extension wire. Let me see if I have an example. Here's like an example of that. This one's really, really small. Um, but they make these in like super long sections that you can just like plug into your servo and then plug into your controller board. Um, it's not as convenient, you'll have a lot more wires to deal with, and you may deal with issues with signal loss if the wires are too long, but they do make boosters that you can put on the ends of these. Uh, I have those, where did I put those? I can't remember if I linked those in the chat or not. I can send a link in the chat afterwards, um, but it looks like that's not going to be an option for this year. Uh, but going back to, if you did get some, if you did get your hands on some this year, uh, and you would like to do it the way I did mine. I added a plate in the middle of the bracket and that's where I mounted that uh, receiving board to plug into the servos. Um, and then if I go to find my other pictures, let me switch this back real quick because you're not seeing all my things. Um, and then over top of that, regardless of whether or not you're using the uh, receiving boards or anything. Let me switch it back here. Okay. Regardless of whether or not you're using the 
ex like the receiving boards, sitting receiving boards, if you're just using the server wire. Um, here's a good thing that you can do to also help with the lifespan of your servos and skeleton is make a metal plate that goes over top of the servos. Um, something that will stand off enough from them so that they can like still move around freely, that there's not going to be any issue with them binding on anything. Um, but this also allows it so that when you're putting clothes on the skeleton, you don't have to worry about the servos getting caught up in the clothing. Uh, these just screwed onto the plates there. I wanted to add like a hinge so you could just like unscrew it and then just like open the hinge so you can easily get to the servos. I didn't end up doing that just because I ran out of time. Um, and of course on mine I had the receiving board there and I cut out this square in the middle so that I could plug in the servos into that receiving board without having to take this off. Uh, but of course if you are not using a receiving sending board combo, if you're just using the servo extensions, you don't need to do that. You can just have a plain thing too. Also, I very much recommend labeling things. It will help. Not only if you're... I labeled these because I wasn't the ones uh, installing the animatronics. I wrote instructions and they were installed by the client, um, which is why I wanted to have everything very clear and labeled. But also, it helps yourself if you're... You know, these should last a few years. So if a couple years down the road you're like, oh, I can't remember how I plugged this all in and you don't want to go in and change the settings every year between which pins things are plugged into, uh, just super convenient. Just have everything all nice and labeled where you plug things in and all that. So yeah, let me bring it back here. Cool. All right, so that is a rundown on, oops, that's not the right button. There we go. That's a rundown on the brackets uh, and the different kind of options. Sorry, I don't have also the measurements of that um, cover. Uh, I didn't, I don't know if I wrote, if I kept the measurements after I sent them. I should have kept them, I just don't know where that paper is. Um, and I also can't take them anymore because I'm not with them. Or I could get them next weekend while I'm there. Huh. That's true, I will be seeing them next weekend. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, alrighty. Let me check for questions real quick as well. Do, 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 do. Checking all my questions. Link to the roller coaster people. Link to magic texture. Thank you, Derek. That's very helpful. Uh, <laughs> um, let me, thank you so much, the animatronic dude. That was such a fun project. Again, I recommend you guys go check out that video of like the POV and go check out their other coaster as well. Uh, they've made two so far. It's that was a really fun project. Um, ended up screwing the servos in between the ribs. That's interesting. Uh, I haven't tried that. No more sending receiving words. No, I know. I'm so upset. <laughs> there is so convenient. I really would like to make my own. <laughs> I, because I, I really, I want to, I also want ones that have like the ability to like plug in a bunch of Ethernet cables and like a bunch of uh, servos in one spot. I think that might be convenient. Um, I don't know if they're patented, but if they're not, I would love to jump on that maybe. Uh, because I use, not, even like if I'm not looking to make a profit or sell like a bunch of them, I would like to have them to, for my own projects. Uh, so that is something that I really want to look into this year and do some research on is how to perhaps make something similar. Um, I always label everything because I forget the wiring. Yes, same. It helps. <laughs> I, um... Yeah, especially also if you have, like, uh, going back to this here, if you have, let me pull up my uh, thing so I can check real quick if I'm, yes, okay, so I'm trying here. Uh, speaking of, also, like I said, Corvus earlier, if you have a bunch of wires running out of your animatronics, like servo wires, at the end of the day, you might just have a bunch of, like, this, and you can't see into the animatronic. I love getting little labels and labeling the end of my servo wires as well. Even if you do just have two servos, sometimes, you know, it's Halloween night, you're busy, you, something's, you need to unplug it back in or something, and, like, you can't see and it's dark and you don't, like, trace the wires, it's always nice just to kind of put, I haven't done it here, but put a little label at the end there. All right, we good on the brackets? Excuse me. It is time to put it on the skeleton, so let me do the old-fashioned zoom out. Ooh, look at that. Alright, 
I hope this webcam looks good. I haven't, I just got it in like yesterday. Thank you to all the Patreon people who made that possible. I bought it with the Patreon money because that is, I've been using Patreon money to help fund because I want to do that. I want to make, that's for like improving the channel and making things better and buying pneumatics and things and servos and whatnot so that I can keep doing this. So thank you all for making that possible. Love you all. Um, all right. So let's see if we can get this. Yes. Look at that. Now if it will just focus. I'm to try to cover it up. There are two holes in here uh, that you should ignore. It's these two that my fingers are on. Um, you can't see them because I covered them up with a tiny scrap of sticker that I found. Um, there's a couple random holes in the skeleton from just drilling things on that were testing. I was testing the arms here as well. Uh, so anyway, let's measure and find out where exactly the holes are that go on the scapula. Because again, I what I usually do, and I know this is not very scientific, but you know what? Sometimes animatronics is just more art than science. Or maybe it's just more gut, just feeling it out, you know? Um, I usually just assemble this all together to make sure that the servos fit nicely, uh, and then it works. And then I take this assembled thing, and I go, boop, and I just smack it right on. Smack that bad boy right on your skeleton. And then you line it up. I know it doesn't always fit. Also, the nice thing about these, like, steel, um, you can also do aluminum. It would be more expensive. I don't really see a difference between the aluminum and the steel. This actually might be aluminum. Uh, I'm not sure. I think the originals I built, which would be this, were aluminum. Steel, cheap, same effect, but cheaper. Uh, I usually stick it on the skeleton and then I move it around. You want to make sure that the servos are like evenly spaced over the spine. There's like three knobs on the spine. There's like this main one that sticks off and then two that stick out around it. The servo should rest like right... Yeah, okay. So like right on the outside of those knobs. So it should frame it like right there. And then if, as far as like up and down... Um, again, it's not super precise. Uh, I've never really, like, sat down and, like, measured everything out. It's more of just, like, well, it's, it looks consistent across my skeletons, uh, but I will give you guys the measurements. Because we can. Because we have a ruler. We have the power to do that. I bring it down. Oops. This ridge here, again, like I said, I use a lot of, um, let me move this so you can see it better. A lot of it's just based on the features of the skeleton, because again, also every single skeleton is different because the molds, the quality is just a little, a little questionable sometimes. So the skeletons can all be different. Uh, it is about a centimeter down from this ridge. On this side, it would be this ridge. You see how that sticks up a little bit? I measure, I place this down so that it's centered, like I said, on the spine. That gap is perfectly framing the spine. And then I bring it down about a centimeter off of this ridge. Again, does not have to be super crazy precise. And once you have that on there, of course you'll want to pre-drill your holes in the steel. So do that when it's off of the skeleton. So that when you do place it on the skeleton, you can take your Sharpie and you can mark or paint pen or whatever you use. We don't stick by brands here, right? <laughs> we love all the brands. Take your paint pen, Sharpie, marker, whatever. Mark where you're going to drill on the skeleton, uh, take it off, then drill your holes, and then of course put it back on and screw it on. And I will talk to you guys as I'm screwing it on, because that takes a while. Let me pull my screws in from over here. And there is a tip that I have to give you about screwing these on that I have learned throughout the years. And unfortunately I do not have the tool with me that I need. You're going to want a screwdriver with a long, like, narrow, I don't know what this part is called, I don't know, screwdriver anatomy, um, the knot handle part, the screwdriver part itself, you want it to be long, uh, and because how I do this, there's a couple different ways you can attach it, I found the easiest way is to go by sticking the screw up through, like going through the rib cage, sticking the screw through that way, and then putting the nut on the back, so the nut goes on the top side here. So let me go ahead and put that through. 
And again, I like to use, of course, like I said, the same screws for everything. It should be the screws that are listed. I, I believe I listed them on the parts list. I'm not sure if I listed any specific screws. Or maybe I did. I don't remember. Um, and also, it's a little easier sometimes if you go up from, like, as you're putting the screw in by hand before you go to screw it in, um, to go up from underneath the rib cage. Because uh, another thing you want to keep in mind as you're screwing these in is that, and of course I'm just going to go through the armhole right now because I took off the arm, uh, the ribs can be sharp. I have cut myself a lot trying to screw and unscrew these uh, parts here. The plastic is very sharp there, so be careful people and do not cut yourself. Take your screwdriver. I already popped, let me see if I can do this better. I already went through and added the screw, so I'm just going to go through the front there put the screwdriver into the screw, see how it's like sticking out there. And then we go back with our nut. Where did that go? And then we add the nut on top. And then we just screw it in. Whoops. You're gonna get to see me fumble and mess around with this in real time. <laughs> Takes a little while. And that is how you're gonna attach the bracket to the skeleton. And this will be the same if you did any of those options for the brackets, if you did, of course, because it's all the same bracket in the end. Um, this is like the base, and then for the Castle Park Skeletons, I added that cover. Uh, which again, I, I would recommend. It's nice to have. It helps if you're putting clothing on them. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Let me scroll. Let me check the questions real quick while I'm screwing these in, just to save some time. Um, you know, people are going off in the chats. I know it's been the horrible news about the Sending Receiving Awards. Um, thank you, Deborah Benson, for also, uh, all the information about that. Because I know that I got all the information and that you talked to them, and that was very helpful. Because I did not know that they weren't making them anymore until you told me. Um, Server City was having difficulty finding the parts. Yeah, that's a good point. I wonder if that's, huh, that's interesting. I will say also, I don't know if they were having issues as well with, like, quality issues with them, like, working all the time, because I've bought, I've had it happen, and I haven't been through, like, too many of the boards, uh, where I buy a board that just doesn't work at all, and I know that's always the case, it's always going to be a case with any electronics, you always have some that just aren't going to work. Um, but I also had someone else reached out to me who had that same problem, and I'm not sure how common that was, if that was a big issue they were facing, if they just couldn't have, like, a reliable product. Um, I'm not sure. Who knows? This is all just speculation on my part. I don't have any, like, insider information or anything. Um, what's the chip on the receiving boards? It is, uh, I just saw this the other day. It's like a hex shifter, uh, which I'm not sure... Why? Actually, let me check. I have that written down on my phone. Let me check real quick. Uh, wow, I have a lot of text messages. <laughs> uh, let me check what that chip is. It can be hard to see because it's like really, really tiny. Um, hex level shifter. Let me see. I wrote, I have a link that was on it uh, while I screw this in we can look at that uh, um, okay let me check real quick Oh, it was in my sent things. I was so upset when I found out about them being on stock. I love those things. They are, um... Actually, maybe we can put the parts list in the chat. They, um... They've been so nice throughout the years, so I really hope that there's a new... option. Okay. So, I looked it up. Sorry if you guys are also beyond that now. Again, there's a super big delay on my what I can see from you guys and what I'm doing. Um, but I'm putting in the chat 
SparkFun has a data sheet for the chip that's on uh, the receiving board. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to like sit down and really look at it yet. I was just briefly being like, oh my god, I'm panicking. What? How? How can we make this? <laughs> um, but that's what I was able to find real quick. Um, let me look at more chat. What were the questions? What were the questions? Using two sending, they can receive also just not boosted. Hey, that's really good information. I did not know that. That's really interesting. For one skelly to now I'm left with one lonely sending board and nothing to receive at all. <laughs> um, call them and talk to them. Thank you for doing that. That was very helpful. We are all grateful for the information that you have gotten from them. <laughs> Do you think you want to post more of our projects? Absolutely post more of your projects. I love seeing all the everyone's work and I know everyone here enjoys seeing Halloween content as well. Animatronics are fun. I want to see more of them. <laughs> um, no, I are they seeing boards. Also, sorry again, everyone who has, who cannot get the receiving boards. I, I was not expecting them to just stop made, made all of a sudden. Um, uh, the shaft of the screwdriver. Ha! I'm learning screwdriver anatomy now. That is it, the handle and the shaft, and the pointy bit. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, wah! I keep doing this. I keep bringing my all my screens down. I don't mean to do that. All right. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, let me bring back up my. Uh, my software, so I can see what I'm doing. Fancy expensive words that you can program to run without computer interaction. Yes. Y yeah. So, uh, if you don't want to hook up a computer to your skeletons, you can also actually use a stick computer, um, which is like an entire computer on a little stick, and it runs Windows. Uh, that's if you actually want to do like the VSA stuff. I know that. Uh, Bob Robertson, Halloween Bob, HalloweenSkulls.com, that guy, he's done that uh, for running VSA without like an actual laptop. Um, those are a little expensive. That's a way to do this exact setup without having a laptop. Or uh, VSA, or not VSA, the people that made VSA used to have a board called the Rafu. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, and this, it would allow you to run VSA without a computer. However, that has also been, I believe, out of stock for, like, years, so I don't think they actually make it anymore. Um, I think, I think that's all I know of now that doesn't need a computer. Also, you can do, depending on the software, you can also, if you are running something like x Lights, which doesn't really work for animatronics, um, but if your program can run on a Raspberry Pi. There's also that option as well. Um, the Raspberry Pi, the $35 computer. It's cheap, small, beautiful. I love it. Um, but of course, VSA can't run on that because it doesn't run on, I don't think it runs on any of that. I think it doesn't run on Linux. I think it only runs on Windows. Um, I'm not sure. I have been looking into that. I really, going back to the software thing, I do really want to find and or program because i'm been doing a lot of programming for skeletons and making my own like controllers and things a like better animatronic show controller that can run on like uh raspberry pi and all that i haven't really i don't know i haven't really looked into that yet that would be a huge project um but yeah unfortunately right now i'm just kind of sticking with computers. You can also buy a dedicated, like, cheap laptop if you want to have something, if you're really going to go full out to be like, yes, this is going to be the animatronic computer. I know you can buy, like, those uh, $250 computers off of Amazon and just have your show on that. Not, it's a lot of money. It's not ideal, but I don't know. Um, thank you for doing this new show and all your ones. How are your school working? Oh, that's great. I'm so glad to hear it. Congratulations. That's always a wonderful feeling. To plug everything in, to have it, like, start moving, that's, like, the most magical thing. I love it. Um, da, 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 da. Ooh! Deborah Benson making a pirate ship out of the foam boards. That's a cool idea. Should absolutely post stuff about that. That would be really cool. I'd love to see that. Um, post projects display? Yeah, absolutely. That would be so cool. 
buy my controller. I'd buy my controller. <laughs> I just want, I just want something where I don't have to use like 20 feet of the, I just want something where I don't have to use like 50 of these, not 50 of these, but like all of my servos that all have the really long cable. That's a nightmare. I just don't want to have nightmares at night because of my wiring. So yeah, I'll look into it. That's something I really want to work on this year. Again, gotta find time with school and everything and all of that. <sighs> anyway, back to our skeleton friend. We are almost done. Um, sorry I was running a little late on time. I, uh, <laughs> I have a lot to get through. I knew this was kind of going to be a long project. But again, if anyone needs to leave, uh, you can always leave and come back. If you have any questions, need any help, um, you can always email me if you're not here for the stream. Of course, also, if you miss the rest of the stream, it will be recorded and uploaded to this channel right afterwards. Uh, so you can always go back and watch it, watch again if you, you know, need to go over something again. Uh, or if you miss any of it, it will be there. So, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our head back on the skeleton, but we're not going to put it back on exactly the way that it was because we want it to be loose and like able to rotate around on that ball and socket joint. And here is another one of my tips. I have to find, there it is, okay. Actually, yes, let's actually talk about this real quick before we do that. Let me see, I don't know what I'm, ah! I gotta bring back up my thing so I know what I'm showing on the screen. I have no idea if I've been in camera this whole time because I can't see, <laughs> I can't see anything. Going great. We're having a good time. There we go. Let's bring this. I don't want to bring that in. I'll have to bring it back and back out. Um, I'll put on a piece of paper so you can hopefully see it better. This is... Wah, bring it into the camera. Into the camera. My camera is also kind of upside down, so it like everything is so weird with my movement. Ah, there we go. Okay. This right here. I will give you the measurement. Um, in two seconds, if I can get it to focus. Focus! Sounds like I'm talking to a child. Focus! <laughs> focus on what we're doing! <laughs> Don't get distracted. I hate webcams with autofocus. If anyone has, if anyone's like, oh, here's a webcam with manual focus, I would love to know what that is. Or, like, where I can buy that, because I only found ones with autofocus. And if they do have manual focus, then they're not usually very good webcams. Ah! Wow, that's really off. Look at me! Okay, ah. mm let's see if I can go into the software and change this. Oh, there we go. It's almost there. It's trying. If we're going to be supportive, we're going to believe in it. We're going to say, hey, webcam, you can do it. You can look at the thing. There we go. See? Believe in your friends. It works. Um, okay. Here's our uh, push rod that we use to um, allow the servos on the back of the shoulders to move the head. This, I believe, I got it as piano wire. I don't remember the diameter uh, exactly. I don't have that measured. I need to get it measured. Um, I think I, I don't remember off the top of my head. I think I wrote it in the parts list. Um, I wish I had a caliper with me. I do not. Um, but I will get that information to you guys if it's not in the parts list. I also listed pre-made uh, of these that you can buy because the piano wire... I cut it to a certain length and then I used a Z-Bend tool to bend it. I also just realized now that I left my Z-Bend tool at home because I was going to show how to use those because those are kind of weird. Um, but that's not with me right now. That is all the way back home and not in this town. Um, anyway, you can buy these pre-made uh, with like a whole like connection. So it'll be this part and these parts, little easy connectors, and the triangular control horns all in one pack. Sometimes those aren't as good quality. Uh, you just want to make sure that it's long enough to uh, go all the way from where we mounted the servos to the skull. So let me get the measurement on that real quick. Where's my ruler? There's my ruler. Sorry if I keep switching also measurement like units. It's so all the way, it is, whoops, that's wrong, the ruler. It's about 19 and a half centimeters. So let's write that down. You're probably not gonna be able to see it because it's upside down. Uh, 
Then I'll flip this around real quick so you can see it. There we go. And for those of you like me who are in the States, because I don't want to, I don't know. It's about seven and a half inches, seven and three quarters inches. Um, again, also, if you make this a little longer than it needs to be, that is completely fine. In fact, kind of encouraged uh, to maybe add on just a, just a little, little tiny bit more because you can always cut more off. And I'll show you why this is adjustable in a minute. But the first thing I'm going to do is talk about one of the wonderful things about going ahead and just having one of these is because we're going to use this piece to help us connect the head back onto the skeleton. Um, so you're going to want a piece of tape. Like I have been saying, I do not have tape I, in my apartment, but I did have a bunch of stickers with leftover sticker paper. So I'm just going to see, I hope this works. <laughs> I will do my best. Because that's all that I can do. So I'm just going to cut off a little piece of quote-unquote tape. <laughs> Great. And, very important, that string needs to be here. So don't cut the string off or anything. Um, this string is important. Let me get rid of my... Let's see... Uh, this one. Perfect! There we go. Now we're talking. <laughs> Alright, so there's a bunch of junk on the screen. Um, ah, it's too bright. Ah. That is also too bright. Let's move it over here. Perfect. Okay. I agree, make it longer than needed. Only made one. Speak from experience. Yeah, speak from experience. Yes. Make it longer than you need. You can always cut more later. And also, these right here, as you see if I slide it in, are adjustable. So you can always go in and change the length without cutting it. You can just change it by unscrewing it and screwing back in. Um, but before we do that, Take your string as it is still connected here. Don't ever cut this off or anything. This is important. We need this. Um, take the end of it. The very end of it. You're going to take your section here. Um, I like to use the end with the little hook just because it makes it easier. I just kind of put the hook into this. And this is going to be tricky. And I hope that I don't make a fool of myself on the camera. <laughs> uh, let me get my sticker. I need to get my sticker so I can stick this on. Alright. You're gonna take a piece of tape. Wow, oh, that's really hard to see. Ah, let's do it over here. Move this out of here. You're gonna take a piece of tape. And you see how I've put the string onto your push rod there? You're just gonna tape it to the end. I really hope this is not too thick. I hope it works. Again, I don't have tape in my apartment because I am struggling. <laughs> I just, I, yeah, I left it at school. That's what I did. I had tape. I had it. I was using it and I left it at school yesterday. So once you've got that tape on there, uh, I think this might be too thick. You want it to be as thin as possible because you're going to take this and you're going to do this little dance thingy where you feed it into the skull down here. And then you're going to look inside the skull and you're going to see the hole on top of the head and you're going to use this rod to feed that string out the other side like through that hole on the top. Again, I don't know if I can fit mine through. This might be too thick. It's also very tricky. So like, I really hope I can get- ah! Sometimes this will happen. Uh, you'll poke it through and the string comes off. It means the tape was too thick and the string couldn't fit. Um, let me see if I can just... I really hope that I can do this. I don't have anything smaller. Uh, I really need tape. Let me see if I can just... Actually, you know what I can also try? Is putting it on the end of this hook and just pulling back on the string so it stays on the hook. Maybe I won't use tape. I normally use tape. Tape is a little bit easier. Ah! This might try take a few tries. So while I'm doing this... Pre-made was not long enough. Interesting. 
pre-made was not long enough. That's a good point. Is it the ones that I linked? I'll need to go back and check that. If it is, I'll need to make a note of that. Because that is something I ran into once before, was that I got pre-made ones and it wasn't long enough. Perfect. There we go. Look at that skill. Wow. <laughs> no tape. This is the first time I've ever done no tape. Look at that. Threading, threading a th like a boss. Okay, so now that you have your uh, skeleton head, like the string fitting through the skull, coming out the top, um, pop it back on to that joint there. Uh, don't screw it in. You don't need to screw it in anymore. And you're just going to take the string. Let's see if I'm going to move this. Let me do my other camera. Uh, this one. Nope, this one. Yes. Let's go this way. Okay. You're going to take the string. Now you've popped him back on. He's going to stay on because you popped him onto that, like, joint there. Take the string. You're going to tie another knot in it like it was when you first got it. However, you're going to want the knot, like, on top of the skull, like, touching the skull. Uh, and what this is going to do is it's going to create just a little bit of tension. And it's going to hold that skull like closely onto the joint once you pop it back off and it'll allow it to fall around um, as like a universal joint but you don't want it to be so loose that it's like flopping around so that's why you want our not to be kind of like touching on the top part of the skull so then if I pop this off it should be able to loosely fall around now again you don't want it to like I said too tight on the top of the skull, which I've just made mine a little too tight. You might need to play around with this a bit, see what works for you. Um, so like I said, I just made mine a little too close to the skull, like a little too tight down on it. And what happened is, as I was moving him around, uh, it wasn't very easy to move him around, and he kept wanting to pop back down onto that uh, ball. The ball kept wanting to pop back up into the socket. But you don't want that to happen. You want it to be able to nice and loosely just stay on top of the ball but not have the ball go back into the socket. So let's try this. Perfect. So now he's like loosely falling around but he's not like super like flopping off of the joint or anything. And again uh, I would probably want to tweak this if I was doing this like just building it. Uh, keep tweaking it until it's like nice and where you want it. Um, I think this is fine for our purposes. And now let's talk about those control horns, as they're called, on the skull. So let me pull back up my... this one, yes. Alright. The last thing you need to put on the skeleton... And you can also do this, actually I recommend you probably do that when the skull is not on the skeleton. Um, or you can do it afterwards, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, these control horns, I bought them from the same place that I bought the swivel ball link and the ball and socket. And the, um, what was I saying? I got distracted because I read, feed it through the top, loop it around the string and pull it through. You could do that too. There's a couple different ways that you could do it. You could probably stick the rod in, like, down from the top, then tape it on, and then pull it through. Um, it also just depends on what you can fit, like how thin you can make it fit through this top hole. But yeah, that would also work as well, feeding the string through. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. Um, I just like doing it because also it's something I always have on hand with me on the skeleton uh, are these rods. So it's convenient just to like take the rod off, do it, and then put the rod back on. Um, but yeah, anyway, I can do that. Let me look at chat real quick if there's any questions. Okay, uh, ones that I linked were not long enough. Okay, I will look into that. I thought I, I measured I measured these and I thought I looked at, measured those. I wonder if... Hmm. I wonder if measurements are... I don't know. I will look into that after this. Uh, so yeah, attaching the control horns. Again, let's bring out our handy dandy ruler uh, to get some measurements on here to see. Again, like I said, I normally just go based on the uh, 
like seam here and again I just kind of did ah, there we go I'll pop it back on sometimes it helps pop it back on if you're like working on them so you're not flopping all around also my voice is kind of going let's wrap this up before too long so I don't completely lose my voice <laughs> um anyway so if I follow this seam like take it from this point down here so if I turn them just a little bit you can see how it comes to a point if I follow this seam and I go up let's use centimeters again it's exactly about three centimeters up from that seam that I put in the point. And you want both of these to be, so one of them, so you want them to face inwards, uh, not outwards, not straight up and down, inwards. So it's at a 45 degree angle. Um, so when you do your two screws on the right side, I know it, it's hard to see at this angle. Sorry, I can't really bring the webcam. Let me just bring them up this way. As you're looking at them, I know you can't really see from far away. The skeleton, this one on your right, these screws should be exactly horizontal. And that will give you that 45 degree inward tilt that you need on this. Uh, and the other ones should be exactly vertical, give you the opposite tilt inwards. Um, let me bring him back down to his little table here. Ah, that was the wrong camera. Oh, I don't know. Where'd my camera go? That was the integrated camera. Wow, I haven't used that one yet because I don't need to. Um, this one. Okay, perfect. So, the... Bring him back over here. Like I said, horizontal, vertical. Both facing inwards, down, like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. And for these, I just drill... I know they have uh, nuts to go with them. Uh, you can feed like your finger up through the hole. If you take the skull off, you can put your finger up through the hole. Hold on those nuts as you do the screws. That's really complicated. I don't do that. I haven't had a problem where I just drill a small hole and then, like, thread them in. That's never given me any issues. Uh, and these are very sturdy on here. So, do what you want to do. Um, let's see. So now that we have that, I'll talk about it real quick last other side last other piece on the other side of this and that would be these they're called easy connectors um whoops this one and i like to use these horns uh that come with the servos you can use any horn i just find that i don't know it was nice because at first i was testing with like length and bringing them out um when i was way back in the day when i was young and i was like this should help change things but i was like no i don't want that um you just, again, drill a hole at the end uh, in your server horn to make sure it's, like, wide enough to fit your easy connects down in. And again, if you want to take a look at what those actually look like from the side, here's all the parts. Again, I wish my camera would focus. Focus. There we go. It's made up of uh, basically three parts. You have the black part that fits on the end. So you're going to stick. You see how this has a piece that sticks out here? There's like a little uh, rod that comes off the end. You're going to take that rod and you're going to stick it through the servo hole. Whoops. You're going to stick it through the servo uh, hole in the servo horn. And then you're going to attach your black piece there. You can like hammer them on a little bit and that'll hold it in place. You just don't want it too tight on the servo horn because you want it to be able to freely spin around. Like I'm just touching it. It's like spinning. Um, but not too wobbly as well. You want it to be so it can rotate but not wobble back and forth. Uh, and then, of course, you put your screw in the top. And what this does is if you unscrew that screw a little bit, you can slide your push rod through the connector. And then if you take your screwdriver, where did it go? Where did it go? Where's my screwdriver? We have so many things right here. There it is. Um, and actually, the first thing I'm going to do is attach this to the control horn first. That actually is a little bit easier. Let me make this full screen. There we go. I go to the closest um, in from the head. Do I do it outside? I do do the outside, right? Yes. The closest hole into the head. Sorry again, this isn't very focused. Ugh, the struggles. Okay, you see the holes here? There's the one that's closest into the head. Sometimes I uh, drill this out a little bit to make it a little bit wider. Um, that seems to be a running theme here, is drilling out holes to make them a little wider. It's always nice to have a drill in hand. 
uh, go in, oh, let me see this real quick. Yes, go in from the outside, feed it in there. I find that I stick it in like this and then I rotate it. Let's see if I can, yeah, stick it in and then rotate it. And that usually like gets it nice and in there. And then once it's attached to the control horn, that's when I slide it through the easy connect on the actual servo horn. Let's see, it might be a little tricky because he's kind of flopping around. There we go. So now that, oops, it is focusing all over the place. Is the black piece rubber? Um, uh, there's two different black pieces you can use. One of them is permanent and one of them is temporary. I I think I've only used the temporary ones just because they stay on really well and I also was like wasn't sure about the permanent ones when I first started using them. And then the temporary ones have just worked better. So and also it helps to use the temporary ones because if you do hammer it on too tight, uh you can always like loosen them a little bit. Um and the temporary ones are the ones that are like a cap and they don't have that. So let me see if I have my piece right here. They don't have like the X. You would put on the like X ones if you want to do like permanent. So yes, temporary is fun. Um, right now I'm just gonna tighten that a little bit. We're not going to worry about how far it sticks out just yet. We will make that a little nicer in a moment once we get on the other piece. So I'm going to, where's my other rod? There's my other rod. Here we go. Do the exact same thing on the other side, of course, coming in from the outside again. And then we are going to also be gentle if you are moving the servos by hand. I know that I do that a lot. Um, you can do it, just be careful that it's not going to cause any issues. Yes. Okay. Um, and then I'm just going to put this here. Now, now we're going to want to adjust the um, rods to make sure that they're the length that we want. And here's another nice thing about making them longer and then uh, adjusting them is also if you notice throughout the night that your skeleton's looking down too much when he's talking, you can pull both of these further down so he's looking more up when he talks and like moves around. So that's a nice adjustment that you have there. I'm going to pull out the servo tester real quick and we're going to center these servos as well because don't forget, boys and girls, we need to center our servos before we put the horns on. Yay! <laughs> um, plugging that in and then we plug in the servo. Ah! There we go. And then we plug in the second servo. You might hear a little bit of chatter because they're a little wonky right now. Okay, so I'm going to loosen both of these screws. Oh, interesting. It's not centered. Oh, because these need to be... Ah! Sometimes they might pop out if you loosen them too much and you're not, like, holding on to it. Okay, so this one... Ah! They're both popping. It's gonna be a little tricky to do it at an angle. I'm trying to like do it where the camera can see it, but I'm also like he's flopping all around. I'm going to put him down on my lap. Ah, I'm sorry, I hit the microphone again. I've been doing that a lot today. Ugh. Get it together, cat. Alright, so we're gonna loosen this. Plug it back in. Tighten this a little bit. Things are falling all over the place. Alright. While I'm doing this, does anyone else have any other questions? Because this will be about the last step we do for the skeleton. And then I'll talk briefly about the controller board and then we will be done. Because I'm losing my voice. <laughs> Alright. So I'm going to stand the skeleton up. I'll stand him up facing you. And er. Uh, Yes, and what I'm going to try to do, and I'll show you in a second once I get this where it needs to be. Is this where it needs to be? Yes, okay. Okay, 
So what I just did is I hit the button on the wah. I am so sorry, guys. Okay, I need to move this mic. I'm gonna move the mic. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I centered the servo. So now centered being that they are straight out this way. Another thing is I didn't show putting the servo horns on. Um, you'll want to make sure that when you do put these servo horns on, this is centered facing outwards like this. Uh, and what that does is it allows you, like if these are, since these are 180 degree servos, um, you go all the way from the top all the way bottom, and that gives you the greatest amount of movement that you can get for the head, uh, the greatest distance of like, because you don't want to do like this way, like horizontally, you know, this is one way, this is the other way, because that's not going to give you a whole lot of movement. Uh, so again, make sure that this is centered. This is your like 1500 microsecond pulse which I can talk more about in the programming. So once that is centered, take a look at your skeleton and be proud of it that you've made it this far. But also take a look at your skeleton and be like, is his head centered? Um, and you want to adjust those rods so that uh, he's looking straight forwards and he's looking up at the height that you want him to be. So I'm gonna adjust it so the back one is a little bit up more. Okay. Hmm. Let me change this real quick. Ah. Sorry, sometimes it just takes a little while. When you're doing things live, sometimes it just needs to take a little while. There we go. That's a little better. All right. That should work a little better. And again, sometimes it can be hard also. Sorry that I'm using this skeleton of all skeletons. He's a little uh, weathered, I should say. <laughs> he has been through a lot. He has a lot of uh, a lot of interesting things about him. Uh, but yeah, he's the only thing I had available at the time. So we will do with what we've got. I also wish I had a smaller screwdriver, but I also do not have that. <laughs> I don't have a lot of things here in my apartment. Alas, I need to get more animatronics building things. Thanks for all the info. Have fun this season. You too! I hope everyone has a great Halloween season. I'm so excited. This year's gonna be so great. I really missed last year when we didn't, you know, have all the Halloween things. Um, I'm going to Horror Nights this year. I am very, very excited about that. I missed it last year. I love Horror Nights. They are very... Oh, no! <laughs> ah, I don't have a tiny screwdriver. This is really hard. Um... I love going to Halloween haunts and things. And if anyone is in California, you should go to, uh, in Anaheim, there's a place called Castle Park. They do a Halloween event called Castle Dark. I will be there. I will also be scare acting a little bit. So if anyone wants to see me scare act, <laughs> or just go have a good time, go to Castle Dark. That'll be really fun. I'm going to be there next weekend, so. Um, yeah. They have rides and... Uh, walkthroughs, like haunted attractions and things. Um, and you also get to see, I have skeletons there as well that are doing their things. So that's very fun. Um, Alright, cool. So now that your uh, rods are connected to your skeleton, I still have them connected. Ah, all these things. All the things. I still have my handy dandy servo tester here. It's still plugged into those uh, shoulder servos, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the knobs on that so we can see the head moving the way that we want it to. So you can see as I'm turning on the servo tester, I'm holding with my mouth. <laughs> as I'm turning on the servo tester, you can see the horns turning as well. Um, so then if we move them together, we can get our little dude to do his stuff. 
So yeah, and if we want to plug in the jaw servo, I really like to use a little extension. Um, when I was doing the receiving boards, if I had a receiving board with them, I would use an extension to plug it in. Uh, but for right now, to also put it on the servo tester, it's nice. It's always just nice to have these as well. Um, so I'm going to hook this up where I plug in the extension to the jaw here. And then I also take this extension and I will also plug that into the servo tester so that we can see all of it working together. So there we go. That's the jaw. So we move this all around. It's really hard to turn. So this is one thing I will say I don't like about... I know some people like to do servo controllers. I know that Disney used to do servo controllers like this. Where it's just a bunch of knobs uh, that you would turn to do things. But the problem is you can't turn a lot of knobs at once. Um, so it's hard to turn three of them at once. But yeah, you get the idea. So now everything's moving and grooving. We got it all up and running. Um, oh, cool. So if you were happy with that movement, um, of course the movement will be uh, very kind of jerky. It's not going to be very clean right now just because we are using a servo tester. And servo testers are just meant to test your servos to make sure they are alive <laughs> and that they can move. And that is really it. Not meant for a whole lot of control. Um, but as long as it's moving, moving and grooving, you're good to go. So yeah, congratulations, you have a skeleton. Um, so that is the animatronic skeleton. I hope I have not missed any parts of this. Uh, I can talk about the controller and the box real quick and that will be the last thing. Although I will say it'll be different now that there's no sending and receiving boards. Um, let me check the questions real quick. Won't be able to put on your show this year because you're moving out. Aw. Well, there's always next year. Make it bigger and better next year. <laughs> I haven't been able to do... The past two Halloweens we weren't able to do uh, like any of our stuff. And I was very sad because my sister made um, the... That shack, the like swamp shack, was part of a two-year plan. Also, sorry, these guys make really awful noises when you move their joints. Um, it was a two-year plan. There was the shack itself, like the facade, but it's a facade for a walkthrough. And inside, we were going to do a, a laser swamp effect, if anyone's ever seen that. Um, and... Uh, we, of course, with COVID happening, and also she, like, moved out and stuff, and it was, there was just a lot of stuff happened, we weren't able to do that. And the year before that, again, like I said, we had tornado warnings and storms, and there was not, like, we couldn't do any of, like, the electronic things. Um, sit up straight. You guys get to see in real time the struggles I have with getting skeletons to sit beside me in videos. It's really hard. Uh, they don't want to sit up straight. Also, sorry. Sorry he's missing an arm. I stole it. I do that. I'm a thief. Uh, spend 175. Yeah, it can be anywhere from like I want to say like maybe anywhere from like 150 to maybe 300 for a skeleton. I don't know. It depends on because it also depends on if you include the controllers and all that as well. Because the controller board itself, I know those SSC 32U that I use is like 45 dollars. Uh, you can get cheaper controller boards. I also will talk about um, you can use the Pololu controllers. They are much smaller. They have a range of sizes. Uh, so if you have only one skeleton and you only need like three servos, you don't need to buy an SSC32U because uh, those can do 32 servos. Uh, the polar boards, uh, which I can also link. Let me write these down to make sure I don't forget anything. Uh, and someone let me know if I've forgotten or if I've forgotten. Put a comment if I forgot to link anything. Um, so I need to link Polo as well. Polo boards. Also that box I use. Servo box. Servo storage. Given myself homework, that's all right. <laughs> um, the polar boards. Uh, the difference. One of the differences being, I did actually have trouble with them because uh, they require a driver uh, that needs an old Microsoft uh, Net framework, um, and my computer was being weird and would not, for the life of me, download it. Uh, I had an IT view or had an IT person and some other people look at it. And they could not figure it out and turns out it was an issue with that version of windows uh like that little update version um for some reason the like 
home version, the professional version could download that framework, the home version couldn't. So if you can't get the framework, then you can't get the driver, which means you can't use the Polo controllers. But I did manage to get it in the end, because out of all things, I was downloading a video game, and the video game automatically downloaded it like a year later. And I was like, whoa. So, who knows? Hopefully you'll be able to use it. Um, it's called the Net Framework 3.5. That's the framework you'll need. So if you already have that, that's great. Um, but yes, Polo controller is cheaper, smaller. It's all up to you what you want to use. Uh, same kind of idea. You can also use them with all the same software. The power setup is the exact same. You just get your power adapter. Let me also bring up my controller so we can talk about that. Uh, all right. Let me do my... There we go. Also, he's twisting a lot because, I, again, like I said, I didn't quite screw those in again. That's all right. I'll do that later. Because um, he doesn't need to be... He's very... He wants to snuggle right now. He's very... <laughs> Stay! Ah. The struggles. It is hard. Working with skeletons. Putting clothing on skeletons is also very hard. They do not want to do that. Uh, da -da -da -da. Reading more of the questions. Making sure I didn't miss anything. Doing any videos on how to program. Uh, create scenes, storylines, best software do so. Uh, yes, the plan right now is to do, I want to do the programming live stream. Uh, I wish I could do that today, I just, I am losing my voice. I've been on the air for th three hours now, so I, we can't do that today. Um, I'm going to be out of town the next two weekends. I, I really want to get it done as soon as possible, though, because I know that people want time, you need time to get this done before Halloween. Um, uh, what was I saying? Sorry, I keep reading the questions and also getting distracted. But yes, that's hopefully going to happen. Um, oh, Riverside. Sorry. I don't know why I kept saying Anaheim. It's not in Anaheim. It's in Riverside. It's just near Anaheim. I keep thinking that because everyone always asks me, they're like, Riverside? Where is that? I'm like, oh, it's like near Anaheim, right? Sorry, it's not in Anaheim. Castle Park is in Riverside. Riverside, California. Sorry. I That was not correct. Um... Uh, real quick questions. Thank you so much. You're welcome, everyone. I love to do this. This is what I want to do. And I'm really glad that, again, it is crazy to me. I had no idea when I made this tutorial, this like a couple years ago, I was like, I'm just going to show people how I made my skeletons. I was like, people will just, maybe they'll watch it. They might find it a little interesting. They'll be like, oh, that's cool. It's like a behind the scenes. And then everyone's like, oh, they still like, because I, I thought maybe like one person might try to make it or two people. And look at us now. It's great. I love these skeletons. I think it's a great project that's like, you know, it's on the, like, it's not super expensive. Um, it uses a lot of parts that are like, <laughs> I have a visitor. Hello. It's my cat Pickle. Hello, Pickle. Come here, Pickle. You should be on camera. Um, it's not super expensive. It's something that even kids can do. Yeah. Something that even kids can do. Um, and uh beginners with animatronics and all that also i just think they look cool it's a very like fun and effective like finished product i think uh other questions before i jump on the controller real quick um say hello pickle <laughs> that's pickle i have another cat named fritz he's somewhere around here um blah, 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 blah. Real quick. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. There's so many questions. I gotta get to him. Oh, there's the other cat. <laughs> Fritz. Thank you. Ah. This is Fritz. He's my little baby boy. He's a little sick right now. I love you, Fritz. Fritz, go see your sister. All right, cats. Um, had to have cats on the stream. Um, cats, cats, and cat. Cats on Cats Menagerie. Get some merchandise. I really want to design merchandise. I think it'll be fun because I want to like make more stuff that I want to wear. Like I want to make more like fun, spooky, animatronic themed clothing and stuff. I think that'd be really fun. Um, because I like doing arts and I also like wearing clothing. So why not combine the two? Don't sneeze on my controller, please. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I would love to do merchandise as soon as I get some time. Uh, yes, I was doing the program live stream. Hopefully it's gonna happen. I will let you guys know when that's gonna happen. I'm not sure yet. Uh, software videos. Thank you guys. I really worked hard on those. Those took me, the, like, a really long time to make. 
Um, I know I didn't go in super, like, detail on those, because again, like I said, I was not expecting people to, like, actually follow along when I made them. Um, so that was an amazing surprise. Thank you all. You're all wonderful, and I am so glad to be here. Uh, cat merch. Oh, I love you. Hi from Australia. Hello, Australia. <laughs> That's really far away. Servos arrived yesterday. Yay! That's always so exciting when you get all your parts in the mail. Cat shirts. Yes. No, don't step on the computer. Don't step on the computer. No, Fritz. Fritz likes to sit on. Ugh. Fritz likes to sit on computers like all cats. Um, I do not want him to sit on this computer. Swamp Shot Creation. Yeah. I. She, Lizzie, my sister Elizabeth did a really good job on that. I was so proud of her. Um, if you haven't seen that video, check it out. I will also probably link that in the description as well. Let me put a thing. Swamp. Swamp. Um. Yeah. That was a really fun project. I didn't really do anything on that project. I, like, painted one day. She did all of that. Designed it. Created it. Everything by herself. It was really crazy. Also, hopefully you can't hear cats breathing. They have a cold right now, and I'm, I'm trying to... I don't know. I'm so sorry. My poor little cats. Um. I'm getting those taken care of. Uh. Donation jar. Oh, That would be nice. I do have a Patreon. Um. If you would like to go check out the Patreon and see extra, like... I have some extra stuff on there. Um, it's cool because also I get to do, I get to post a lot of things that aren't just like videos. Because uh, there's a lot of like content that I want to make that's like not videos. That could be like programs, um, like little software tutorial things, or like um, files for like, no, you cannot step on the computer. Uh, files for 3D printed stuff, um, artwork and things like that. That's all on Patreon. Um, and also, or if you just want to support the channel, uh, I'd really appreciate it. That'd be super cool. Um, so maybe it's at patreon.com slash catsmenagerie. Um, uh, going to be Castle Park next weekend. That's where I'm going. Uh, how do the driver for the new controllers? Yes. Yep. Drivers. They are annoying sometimes. Snuggle struggles. Yes, it is. They have two snuggly cats and a snuggly skeleton who does not know the meaning of personal space. Watch existing software videos. Um, yes, also. Ah, I should not touch my eyeball. I forget I'm wearing makeup. I'm just like, ah, itchy. <laughs> ah, <laughs> it's been a long day. I got up at 7 this morning to get all this stuff ready. Okay. Uh, last questions before I talk about controller real quick and then we all have dinner and good night. Um, what's videos? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, you people are so nice. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Uh... Uh, oh my gosh, I am, uh, I have no idea what times. I'm just gonna be there next weekend, that's what I'm working on it. Music the Pirates is on, it is, yes, uh, the, I did, I talked about the, uh, sounds and where I got all that stuff from. Um, just a lot of fun extra stuff. I am working on more. Cat having a hairball on my laptop. Not, ah! Ah! So many cats. Okay, real quick. Other things that I'm working on the Patreon right now. Oh, I'm working on the servo comparison, uh, the servo comparison sheet, uh, and I'm also going to talk about, there's one online that I want to talk about too. Um, I want to do software tutorials, I wanted to show, there's also a lot of stuff that I'm working on in school, just little like, oh, here's an update of like, here's something I'm sculpting on school, here's another stuff, a lot of fun stuff that got panned for the Patreon, it's all going to be great. Um, yes, anyway, oh my gosh, that is late at night, I'm so sorry, I'll wrap this up quick. The controller, wow! <laughs> I also would like to get some dinner and possibly take a nap. I like the video. You people are so nice to me. Thank you so much. I love you all. Thank you all for being here. Um, I've had a good day. This has been fun. I was so scared that this was not going to go well because I did not feel prepared because it's kind of last minute and I was like, I need to get this done because I want to make it happen this year. Even though all of the everything was like, no, Catherine. The universe was like, no, you're not going to do it, but I was like, no, I am going to do it, and I did it. So, here we are. The controller. I'm going to do dramatic zoom. Dramatic zoom. Wow. <laughs> I'm losing it, friends. Um, controller. This is the controller that I use. It is an SSC32U. That is what I use for all of my animatronics, mostly, if it's like a show. Uh, again, like I said, you can also use the Polo Awards. 
Um, someone brought this up in an email. I don't know if they said it in a comment here as well. And I wanted to reiterate it because uh, I think it's a really good point to remember. Um, the They were having issues with when they uh, were... When they recorded one servo and sent it to the board, it was fine. But the second they started adding more servos in the show, uh, they were seeing issues with movement getting all like sporadic, like it was speeding up and slowing down. Um, which sounds like an issue with the baud rate, uh, which it ended up being. So the thing is, I know in that video, the original tutorial I made, I talked about how uh, 9600 is like the standard that, every, that this board ships with. Um, and like the standard default in the program and all that. I set mine a little higher just because this board can handle it. Uh, but if you do want to change the baud rate that you're using in the program, and just like in general, on your, if you're using an SSC32U, you do have to change it on the board itself. Um, there's a... where is the little button? Okay, let me see if I can get the camera to focus. And I'm very glad they sent me the email because I totally forgot about that. Um, I think I had talked about it in the video. I just wanted to, again, reiterate it here to make sure everyone remembers. If you change the baud rate, there's a button here labeled baud. And there's the SSC32U manual. Uh, let me put a note to link that. C32U manual. Also, it's just always helpful to know where that manual is just in case you have any other questions with using this board. Um, it is great. Uh, I think it really clearly lays out everything. Same thing with the polo boards. There's manuals for those as well. Uh, change it here. These lights, A and B, will all, like, show you... I say show you what the baud rate means. It makes more sense if you look in the manual. It'll say, like, oh, if A is on and B is off, that means it's at this baud. Or if both of them are on, it means it's at this other baud rate. Uh, you just want to make sure that the baud rate on the board matches what you're using in the software because you can change it all you want in the software but if it doesn't match on the board then you're going to run into issues um so of course make sure that you have that set up uh same thing i want to talk about or same thing basically being like don't mess up like i did uh on here the power uh i i believe in the video the original video that i made i connected the power to this center two terminals because in the old SSC 32s because this is the U this is the newer version I was using the old version in the videos and in the old version you could use that center section uh, you didn't really want to but you could still use it and it would work to power the servos however on these new versions um, there are six terminals here you know three pairs this pair on this side powers this bank of servos and this on this side powers this bank of servos um, and I believe that, I believe there's a way you can power both of them off of one, but I don't remember how to do that. Again, check the manual. It's always great to read the manual. Um, so you're going to want to have your power supply connected to, if you're using the row VS1, which includes servos 0 through 15, you're going to want to connect your power to VS1. VL just does the logic of the board. And like someone asked earlier, it's a good, another thing to bring up. Uh, Arduinos can run on power based on the computer. You don't want to power servos off of an Arduino just through the computer's power. You want to power your servos separately. Uh, this board cannot power servos just off the USB. Um, it doesn't do that because you don't, it doesn't, that's not good. The, that USB can't provide like that amount of power. Um, so you do have to have this external power source if you want to move your servos, which of course you do, since this is a servo controller. Um, uh, so, again, also the power supply. Um, like I said earlier, uh, any sort of, like, you can use a battery pack, you can also use the power adapters that you can buy on Amazon. Um, I use a 6 volt 3 amp one off Amazon, and I also just buy these little connectors, I believe they were in the parts list, maybe. Um, and, of course, you just use your little wire to connect it. And that's pretty much it. It's very easy. I also buy these standoffs just because it makes it nicer, especially when you're mounting it inside a board or inside a box like I have over here. Um, this is my box, as you guys have seen in the other video, uh, with all the 
or the sending boards, which is not a thing anymore, unfortunately. Um, and again, how I make the holes. These aren't clean holes because I didn't, whoops, there we go. These aren't clean holes because I didn't do the cat's fantastic clean hole routine <laughs> where I, you know, did all the filing and everything. Um, I, uh, you can just mount them, screw them in the bottom with all the standoffs and all that, and then cut your little holes out, plug everything in. It would still be good to have, even if you aren't doing all the receiving boards, it'd still be good to put one of these inside something, just to protect it from, uh, any sort of, like, damage or even moisture and humidity. I don't use the, like, fancy actual electrical boxes, because those are expensive, and I've found that Tupperware works because I don't need it to be super, uh, like, bless you. That was Fritz, my cat sneezed. Um, uh, I don't need it to be super waterproof because this isn't, this stays indoors Halloween night. Um, so I don't need the fancy electric boxes. I just use Tupperware. Because I'm thrifty. Uh, da da da. All right. And again, with those sending and receiving boards not being available anymore, you would just take your, like, servos. Let me take this wire here. So let's say, let's pretend that this piece over here... Let's pretend that this piece is not, like, six inches long and instead is, like, you know, three feet long. Um, so this end, the female end, is what's connected to your servos. And then I know it's counterintuitive, but the male end is what you plug in onto the um, actual controller board itself. So you're basically just plugging your servos into the board itself, just using the extension wire. And that's how you would do it without those sending and receiving boards. Uh, just joined in, what would you recommend? Now we've stopped making those sending and receiving boards. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, I have not found a good alternative for that. Um, so in the meantime, we're all just using our really long servo extensions. If you need, if you find issues with, I would not use too long, don't go crazy. Um, you might need to use the signal boost. They make little signal boost packs that you can like plug into these and then like extend from there. Um, you may need to use those. Unfortunately, again, sorry, I have not found something yet, uh, that works or is like as convenient or nice as those sending receiving boards. Um, but hopefully... Hopefully they will will find an alternative or someone will come up with one. So yeah. All right. Let's see. Three skeletons and about six of the bots connected to the board. It didn't work until I changed the battery. Yes. Because another thing. So battery, battery. The little computer science lesson. Woo. Um, battery is the rate at which like the information is like being sent. I believe that's right. Um, so you don't want it like too slow because then you can't, um, you don't, like you're missing like the information and stuff and you can't keep up with the amount of like servers that you're trying to send. You also don't want it too fast on the end of the spectrum because um, you want to make sure that whatever it is on the receiving end can keep up with that and can receive all the data that quickly. Um, so yeah. Apache cases from Harbor Freight are awesome if you do need to put the controller out in the weather, but if all wires need to be sealed up. Yeah, that's great. That's a good suggestion. Um, yes. Uh, always want to keep things nice and sealed up. Oh, excuse me. I'm a little tired. <laughs> Bless you, Fritz. My cat's sneezing a lot. He's a little sick. I'm so sorry, Fritz. Come here, Fritz. Call me, Fritz. Oh, he doesn't want to come here. You can see the shadow. Oh, there he is. Ladies and gentlemen, Fritz the cat. <laughs> Oh, he is going to join us. Oh, he's just going to sit right there. Hi, friends. <laughs> all right. Any more questions? I believe that is all... All that's to it, really. And again, uh, one last thing, of course. The last thing you need to do is take your controller and then just plug it into the computer. This one uses a micro USB, and then you just plug it in the USB. I'm not going to go over programming today. I will be going over that. Um, uh, hopefully next stream. I don't know when the next stream is. I will let you guys know as soon as I do know when that is. Did not realize they stopped making sitting routine boards. I know, it's news. <laughs> it is very upsetting. Of course, that's an on the way. Congratulations! Yes, should have ordered more. That's great. I'm glad that you got some because they're about to be in high demand. Where did you find them? I feel like. 
I saw there was another vendor that was selling them when I was doing research on alternatives, uh, but they were also out of stock. So I do know that there's like two or three other people that do sell them, but they were all Servo City's brand. Like it was all the, um, it was those, I don't know if it's Servo City's brand who makes them. I think it's Actobotics that makes them, right? I think that's right. Actobotics makes them. Um, but, uh, they, um, there's a couple other like distributors that did it, but they were all like out of stock. So I think that that's kind of it. I love that animatronic people are gathering here. Mm -hmm. Yes. I always think that. I'm like, I'm an animatronic person. I'm like, well, I'm not an animatronic person. I'm a real person. <laughs> but I don't know. It's funny wording. <laughs> uh, da -da -da -da. Hope Fritz gets a feeling better. Me too. I've been giving him lots of like warm foods and things to help clear him up. Um, maybe take him to the vets. I'm not sure yet. He's Because the thing is, he just got in from the shelter and all the shelter cats had little colds. Uh, and his sister had a little cold, and then she just got better. It, like, went away in, like, two days. So I think he's just, like, gotten it now. And it's, I think he's feeling a lot better this morning. He looks a lot better. So I think it's just, like, a little, you know, shelter cat cold. I'm so happy. My little tokies. Uh, I don't know. Such an awesome stream. Thank you so much. I was so glad you all came. Um, got them from Robot Shop. Yes, that's another great uh, website. There's Service City. There's also Robot Shop. Robot Shop does, like you said, good place. They have a lot of good things. Um, so they're all just so nice. Oh, you're welcome. Robot Shop is out of stock. Yes, that's also sad. Like a little full-on community. Yes. Yes! Let's do it! Let's start an animatronics club? Group? Friend group? Whatever. I don't know what to call this. An army. That's it. An army. <laughs> the menagerie! It's Cat's menagerie! Whoa! <laughs> Ah, yes. Welcome everyone to the club. Stop. <laughs> I need space. <laughs> ah, this is this is me. This is me every time I sit down to make one of these videos. Every five seconds, because you know I, I like cut a lot of stuff. You know I'm like oh, I'm doing my lines. Every five seconds I'm doing this, because they just don't want to sit on couches. It's very annoying. Anyway. Maybe with a little development, have a look in the arrive and see what it takes to build. Yes, we've been looking. I posted in the chat, if you watch the recording, uh, I found, if anyone wants to take a look at it, SparkFun listed the data sheet for the chip that's on the receiving boards. It's a hex level shifter. Um, so, and that's what does the boosting. Cat's minions, yes. My little minions. But you are not mine, you are all free. You are all doing your own amazing animatronic projects. Squad. Fritz, don't step on that. <laughs> Thank you, little boy. I love you, Fritz. No, you cannot do that. Alright, so, any more questions? Please don't sneeze into the microphone. I don't think people want to hear that. <laughs> When's Animatronics Menagerie merch? I don't know, I really want to make that. I, But not just, like, Cat's Menagerie merch. I just want to make fun, like, spooky things and animatronic things to wear. For, like, myself, but also to sell, because I think it would be fun to share that, too. But I love, like, doing art and, like, wearing clothing, so, like... And stickers? Ah, uh, I love stickers on my laptops, on my everything. Stickers, all that shirts and things. The cat pack, yo, that's good. Um, all right, I am. It has been three and a half hours. <laughs> Sorry, it ran a little late. We were um having a good time and we lost track of time. That's what happened, right? Yeah. All right, I've given myself a lot of homework. Stop! I'm so sorry. Please don't be sick anymore. I'm so sorry. I hope you get better soon. Um, I've given myself... Ballpark when the next stream will be. I'm not sure. I know that I'm going to be out of town for the next two weekends. Um, and possibly the third weekend. Uh, it, and I really don't want it... I want it to be as like far back from Halloween as possible. I want to give you guys plenty of time. Um, it would just be, of course, going over the programming. Which, of course, I do have that pre-made video that I talked about their programming. Um, so let me know how much priority the stream would be if that's like really because i even if i don't go through and like program the whole thing even if i just pop on and say like hey questions how's it going like let's check in you know um even just that i don't know if it would have to be during the week sometime problem is i have like classes a lot <laughs> and homework and things um so uh i am working on finding a time when that would be so yeah i'm not sure when the next live is gonna happen Sorry, I know that's all delayed. I know it's really hard. It's hard answering questions when, like, they're really, really far behind and delayed in things. Um, 
Go and work on the power, guys. Bye, Deborah. Thank you for coming along. Hope you have a great weekend, too. I am going to... Hey, Fritz. Say goodbye, Fritz. This <laughs> is a cat. Cat mustache. All right. I think that is all I'm going to go over. If no one has any more questions, I am going to go take a nap. <laughs> Good luck, everyone. I hope you all have fun with your skeleton projects. Um, thank you all for coming. I will see you in the next stream. Bye, everybody. Where is... How do I get out of here? <laughs> Catherine, your cat's just stuck in the stream forever. Where is the in-stream button? There it is. All right. Bye, everyone. See you later. Ah! In... Cool. Um...